Hola, mi gente, and welcome to Stays Crunchy and Milk. If you have questions or comments, queries, statements, or otherwise, we have multiple ways to be reached. Twitter is, of course, the best way for those that need instant gratification, and the show's Twitter feed is at Skimpod. That is S-K-I-M-P-O-D. That's where I like to fight. For the more patient amongst you, the email address for the show is podcast at statescountrymilk.com. That's crunchy being spelled with a K. We're available via Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, Spotify, and a partridge in a pear tree. And of course, the website, statescrunchingmilk.com. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share the show. And a band plays on here at Skim, and to that end, we provide you a pod podcast. A musical discussion podcast built on a hip-hop foundation. And you know what? It's dope. Our personal Twitters are Tatum216, Lunchbox2099, your host, the Internet's Tayrell713, and me... Well, damn it, I'm the real ODP. I'm in junior high with a B-plus grade. At the end of the day, I don't hit the arcade. I walk from school to my mom's apartment. I gotta tell the suckers every day don't start it. Because where I'm at, if you're soft, you're lost. To stay on course means to roll with force. A boy named Rob is chilling in the bins in front of my building with the rest of his friends. I give him a pound. Oh, I mean, I shake his hand. He's the neighborhood drug dealer. My man, I go upstairs and hug my mother, kiss my sister, and punch my brother. I sit down on my bed to watch some TV. Do my ears deceive me? Nope. That's the fourth time this week. Another fast brother shot dead in the streets. The very next day while I'm off to class, my mom goes to work cold busting her ass. My sister's cute, but she has no gear. I got three pairs of pants with my brother I share. See, they're in school. See, I made a fool. With one and a half pair of pants, you ain't cool. But there's no dollars for nothing else. I got beans, rice, and bread on my shelf. Every day I see my mother struggling. Now it's time I got to do something. I look for work, I get dissed like a jerk. I do odd jobs and come home like a slob. So here comes Rob. His gold is shimmery. He gives me 200 for a quick delivery. I do it once, I do it twice. Now there's steak with the beans and rice. My mother's nervous, nervous, but she knows the deal. My sister's gear now has sex appeal. My brother's my partner and we're getting paper. Three months later, we run our own caper. My family's happy. Everything is new. Now tell me what the fuck am I supposed to do? Hello and welcome to it. Stay Scrunchy and Milk episode 380. I'm back up in this bitch again. My buddies is here with me. It's Tatum216, Lunchbox2099, the real ODP. Hello. And we're doing this shit once more. Uh, we, we, are, we are hitting the ground running, you know, with the intention of trying to wrap up uh, at, at a decent hour. And uh, it is that time of year, month, however you wish to do it, my long-term listeners know, is new Oreos out. We got them shits. We bought to eat these drinks and tell you what we think of them. We have the Brookio Oreo Limited Edition joints. These are, I guess, uh, Brook, uh, brownie and uh, chocolate chip cookie and then squished into an Oreo. It's a whole lot going on there. Brownie, original cream and cookie dough, artificially flavored, triple layered cream cookie. That's what it says on the package. And, uh, New to the permanent Oreo fam is the Java chip flavor uh, cream. And uh, like, like uh, Gabe pointed out earlier, this one is not leaving the shelves. This is just a part of the game. It's a coffee flavored cream with chocolatey. I love how they say that. Mainly basically they're trying to tell you that it ain't chocolate chips. It's chocolatey. You know, they hung out with chocolate once. They, they, they're okay people. And we're going to test these out. Let you know what we think. How, you know how we grow and, uh, and, and, and get down with the get down. Right. Uh, what are we trying first? Let's do this Java chip. Is it's a permanent uh, uh, invite to the game? Since I already yeah. opened up my pack, very, 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 very strong coffee smell. Like right off. Yeah, the bat. very coffee for it. As you, as we recall, years ago, the uh, oh jeez, chocolate chip cookie dough Oreos smelled of and tasted of mocha. Then they came with the Dunkin' Donuts mocha joints. You know, coffee. And now they have these. So it's like, at this point, they probably have a lot coffee down as a flavor. It's relatively easy for them to uh, to make it happen. Okay, so right off the bat, have you guys noticed the difference in color in the two cookies? No, you can't notice because you only opened up one pack. Yeah. Is there a difference <laughs> in the uh, in the actual cookie itself? Is there a yeah, the, the wafers are two different colors. Huh. Well, when I get to the other one, I'll check it out. Y'all eat uh, it. No, uh, y'all, y'all just smell it. Very coffee for its smell. Uh, pack Shit. looks good. Shaved me like a uh, ton of bricks. Yeah, no, it's very no, coffee for 
No broken Oreos in, in, in the pack, so that's, that's, that means they actually shipped them pretty well. Sometimes, you know, you get these joints and they be like busted to shit, so. Um, you know how we get down. We do it dry first, so let's take a taste. Mm -hmm. um, stronger smell than taste in the uh, dry form. Yeah, they must like spray um, spray some, some coffee perfume in the package <laughs> before they close it up. Essence of coffee. Yeah. That's not very coffee for it. Yeah. Second up, just just we just do the cream. I get, but it smells wildly coffee. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you can kind of well, I guess it's supposed to have chips in it, so chocolatey chips, as they describe chocolatey money. Come on. Oh, just the cream by itself is is uh, actually very. I mean, I guess it should be very coffee for it. So the wafer must the wafer just be must be just kind of beating the coffee flavor back. Uh, wow, wowzers. It's not like straight up coffee, but I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying? For me, hmm. I got the Oreo tongs. <laughs> you fancy. So I can dip in my... I got I to gotta reach into my milk like some kind of fucking animal. My Oreo <laughs> mug. <laughs> like some kind of fucking animal. <laughs> when I ask for spaghetti, they give me ketchup and egg noodles. Uh, that's probably long enough. Um, I could let that soak a little bit longer. You're right, I could have. Hmm. It does nothing. Yeah, like absolutely nothing. I'm actually going to let it soak a little bit longer and see if it helps. Yeah, let me try that. Let that, me give that another shot. Well, is it too early to start giving reviews? Well, you know, we review at the end, so yes, it is too early to be giving reviews. Oh, okay. the end after we've eaten both cookies. The chips well, are just, just kind of there. Though. They don't really do anything. Just crunchy bits kind of in the way. Yeah, I didn't notice them when I didn't deconstruct the cookie. Does it actually have caffeine in it? Because that's what that could be some appeal. <laughs> I'm doubtful of it. It's uh coffee flavor, so I don't uh, believe there's any actual coffee in it. That should do that. This should get a caffeine-infused uh, Oreo. The uh, Oreos that'll keep you up at night. What we don't need. Caffeine is is bitter, and so you'd have to try to battle it back. You know, it's a difficult flavor to kind of... It's why things have to be sweetened so much, you know what I'm saying, in caffeinated beverages. Yeah. Uh, Although, that AHA water is caffeinated, and it ain't bad. No, that's yeah, not, but not it's, great. It's, it's other flavors in it. It's lemon. It's tea. Stuff that can ride over the 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 the, the what's called the uh, yeah, the I, caffeine. I remember getting that caffeinated water from uh, from Highness. Mm -hmm. Worst shit I ever tasted. <laughs> Worst. Uh, and you told me I not to it. get it, and I was like, mm, okay, <laughs> I'll try it. So <laughs> I tried Yaha water. The, the, I don't know if this sounds like a good combination. The cherry flavored. Uh, Coffee. Oh, oh yeah, I saw that. But you know, coffee is a the bean itself is a coffee cherry. That's what it's called. You know what I'm saying? The bean uh -huh. is the seed in there. So th th there, it makes perfect sense. I I'm gonna crack open. I didn't love it. Brickios. My apologies. I'm sorry. What? I didn't, didn't love, love it. it. So bonus review. Did you from from right off the jump? Did you see the difference in color in the wafer? Uh. The brookie is a yeah. There is a there's a there's a a, a type of well I, can, I mean I can show the camera so uh, they look darker. Also substantial size difference. You see that? Mm -hmm. I thought you were holding one closer than the other. Nope, those are right next to each other. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Interesting. The triple decker brookio. This guy is a considerably smaller cookie. I wonder why the expiration date on these ones is only May. Which one, the brookies? Yeah, the brookie. Well, um, like things that are seasonal, like when you go, uh, like when you get um, Easter candy, Easter candy, candy like, like the, the shelf life, they, they don't put as many preservatives in those. So um, they're usually better. That's why they probably the reason they taste better. Hmm. It smells like a, snow, uh, a cold stone creamery. It does have an ice cream vibe. That's a lot of fucking cream, man. Oh, <laughs> all right. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> Maybe a little too much going on here? Unga Pasca. <laughs> Unga Pasca like a motherfucker. I was just about to say, man. I feel like the cream's like dominating everything, though. Like the white, fluffy cream. Yeah. All right, there we go. Capless. Uh, that giant fucking calorie difference between the two cookies, too. But the Brookie one got to be like 8 million, right? 180 per two cookies, where the other one's 140 per two cookies. Wow. All right. For, I don't know if I'm for looking what forward is to technically this. A, what is clearly a smaller cookie by measure... And uh, just more calorically dense because it's triple layered of cream. Yeah, that cookie, this cookie is, is well, a monster altogether. So I have the the Java one sitting on top of the Brookie one. Yeah, the Brookie one's thicker because of the three different flavors, but the cookie size is the same. 
Oh, well, I just had them next to each other. You, clearly, they're not the same. <laughs> no, like the 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 wafer oh, parts. Guess... The wafer parts are the same size. How funny they don't look the same on camera. You like like right there. Look at that. Do they not look different sizes? They do. And look... They're right next to each other. That yeah. um. <laughs> like, I mean, like I'm, I'm holding them like upside, like to to each other, and yeah, they're they're right next to. And even then, they they still have a. They look different, you like know. Like the the brookie ones on kind of an angle because it's got all the cream in it, and like each layer is not like the same, so it's kind of like leaning a little bit. But yeah, but it's it's clearly not the same color. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, that's I what, agree that's with what, that. That's what making your eyes eyes all fucked up. It's like one of those weird, like uh, you know, uh, eye test puzzle things. You know what I'm saying? It's an old lady and a young lady all at once. It's the same size, even though they look different size. So there you go. A cougar and a kitten. <laughs> I wonder if the bricky one will be easier an easier dunk than the Java one. The Java one, no. it, it, I let it soak for a while, and it did not uh, really soften up for oh me. Oh, my God. That's getting no. All right. I have, uh, I have opinions. <laughs> All right. Let me take this out of the soak. Well, that is uh, a... <laughs> I have, like, a table full of Oreo remnants. <laughs> they, definitely, they definitely gave us less bricky ones, though. Because when you look at the, the packages... The Java one says the package is 1.1 ounce, whereas the Brookie one's only 13 ounces. All right. Well, okay. Um, I'm just, I'll, I'll just get this uh, get this party started. Um, Let's get this party started quickly. Having having eaten the uh, gingerbread ones uh, some months back, which were some, kind of the best Oreos I think I've had in years to go back. To walk backwards is what they've done in this early go round of uh, 2021. These are they're 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 cookies. They're certainly Oreos, but they're not. Nothing about them is great. Nothing stands out to me. I I have nothing that says that is brownie and cookie. It it just tastes like a chocolate ass Oreo. The coffee one is a very it's a coffee sit forward, and the cream itself is whatever. It milk did nothing for either of them in my opinion. Um. Just bland, boring ass cookies. Uh, they, 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 they. <laughs> what, what a sad waste of money. <laughs> That's exactly what came to my mind. Boring. <laughs> Both of these are dull. The uh, a brookie one was a little too sweet for my taste. It's my kids would like them. It did hit real hard. Like I only ate the three required for our tastings right now. Because yeah, I didn't want to put board on. Oh, go ahead. That's why I just chugged my glass of milk and then. Uh, you guys saw me kind of lean off camera. I put my cup down on the floor so that my cat can lick the milk out of the cup. Get their residue popping. Yeah. Well, because he tried to hop up here before we started eating because he saw that I was pouring milk from the jug into the cup. And he's like, ooh, milk time. But I'm like, uh-uh. You're on lockdown right now. Like, not for but, you, uh, sir. Yeah. No, the Java ones, man, they hit like a boxer when you open the package. Like, that Java smell just like... I, I, I recoiled, not like because it was gross, <laughs> but like I, I was like, I wasn't even looking at the package when I opened it. And next thing I knew, I turned my head and it was like, ugh, just like I got punched right in the face. But then like when you eat them, like you get a little bit of like a job, like a coffee taste. Like it reminded me of like getting like a McDonald's Frappuccino when I was a kid that was like heavily sugared up and whatnot. Damn, son. <laughs> I'm taking it with me, Daddy. Get out. Get over it. He just he just pulled it over with his paw so that he could uh, try and get into it a little easier. It's amazing watching an animal try and like figure out how the best way to approach something. But anyway, so the Java ones like like the smell was a lot stronger to me than the cream taste. And the chips, excuse me, and the chips and the cookie did nothing for me. Like they were kind of distracting in a way. Yeah. And then in the brookie, like the the marshmallow fluff part is is very apparent to me. It like it kind of like melts in, it was melting around on my tongue. It was given this like feeling of airiness. And then when I dipped it in the milk, the that seemed to kind of dissipate some. Like the milk broke it up. Yeah. And and I got more of the brownie taste out of the milk. But like the cookie dough part, like I barely could even tell that was there. It- it might as well not be there at all. It just it, it it serves purpose in that it I guess it adds a a look. You figured out something to triple up with, you know what I'm saying? But it doesn't taste like anything. We've had we've had fudge brownie Oreos, we've had chocolate chip Oreos at this point. We know we, we know it we uh, forgive me, cookies cookie dough uh, Oreos. So it's not that like we hadn't had these before. I just I don't know. They weren't good then, they're not good now. Uh, you just 
<sighs> Oreo is so disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, both cookies um, were the 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 Brookie cookie. It was just it was just way too much. Um, like this is how much I got. Like I ate two of each. Well, I ate uh, two um, of the Java chip ones. So I could only eat this much of the uh, the second one. It's just like way too much. I tasted the cream, ate a little bit of the cookie. It was very very sweet. That the cream is um is 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 just is just too much. Um, I'm, I don't I don't know what to do now with all those cookies. I only ate, only I only ate two whole cookies, and that's the ones I dunked in milk. The others I only I took bites out of, and uh, I think I'm better for it. My stomach is not happy right now. I got to tell you, I can tell you that right. Yeah, that is a so that, that tells you a lot. It's a, they're not the. Uh, I'm getting a big ah. like buttery taste on my tongue right now. Yeah. Like I just like sucked down Ready Whip straight out of the can. Mmm. Ah, oh, Ready Whip. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Brookie Brookie O uh, gets a. Uh, as always, it is doing what it claims to do. It is a cookie. It is triple stacked. It is a uh, chock full of cream and so forth. So I mean, looks great. Uh, smells smells fine. Actually, doesn't smell anything in particular. Uh, so therefore, I will be generous and give that a one and a one point two five. Damn. The uh, J- Java chip really is potent in its uh, coffee smell. Uh, relatively coffee forward flavor. Did fine in milk, uh, well, but not a not great. I'm not telling you to go buy these. I'm tell- in fact, I'm suggesting outright that you don't bother with either of these. Uh, 1.75 for the uh, for the Java chip. Again, that is me being generous. A lot of that just is on the weight of they are in cookies and they are sweet. They they are what they claim to be. They're not gross like uh, uh, damn uh, that damn cereal we ate before, which is just literally disgusting. So you know that's a lot of that's a lot of the brunt right here that gets you out on this one. Yeah, that's why I was gonna give each of them like a two. Like they're not they're not average to me, but like they're not terrible. They're just they're just whatever. Like yeah, the I probably if I if you had to like ask which one that I like better than the other, I'd probably say I like the Brookie one better, but like. I don't recommend either of them necessarily. Jesus walks. What do you think, man? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna give them both a two. Uh, not to be unoriginal, but the the they just I'm gonna forget about these by tomorrow. They're they're not they're not memorable. Uh, well, no, I might remember them because they'll be in my house still. But <laughs> I hear you. They're they're not they're not they're not they're, they're not, not real. We'll speak of you know down the line. These are gonna come up in discussion. When the next Oreo comes around the bend, we're not gonna be like, "Whoa, what was that last one?" But yeah, I, I they're, not, one. they're not. Go ahead. I was gonna say they're not like I'm at the grocery store buying my normal groceries, and I, I should happen upon the Oreo aisle, and I decide to break diet and splurge on a pack of Oreos. These will not be that. Yeah, no. these aren't these aren't peanut butter pie. These aren't uh, gingerbread ones. These aren't uh, fruit crisp, which we'll never see again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so, uh, yeah. Oh, what else was I gonna say? Oh, sorry to interrupt you. I just, no, it's okay. I, guess, I, I thought I had one more thought. I, I, I lost. Uh, yeah, I couldn't even finish the milk that they were they were soaking in. <laughs> but they weren't they weren't so offensive that I give them a bad grade. So two is not a bad rating. It's just a it's a mediocre. They're mediocre. Mediocre. So I give the um, the brookie a two. <clears throat> and I give the uh, Java chip a 2.25 only because of that punchy smell. That smell, like if you're looking for, um, if you like coffee, you'll like it. That smell um, is, is a hell of a smell when you first open it up. It is coffee. Yeah. But other than that, like, uh, you know, it doesn't bring anything I guess if you want to go to originality, maybe you can say, "Hey, you know, three different creams, baby," because that bitch is big. It's it's pretty substantial as far as like how much cream is in it. If you're looking for an excess of cream and the an excess of um of, of of muted flavors, then go for the other cookie. Yeah, fair, fair enough. And uh, that was uh, this go round with uh, Oreo. We do it every time, people, so you don't have to. Put some respect on it. Uh, 
Unlike last week, I am fully prepared this week, so I can, if necessary, carry this entire goddamn show. That is how prepared I am. I see some articles. Right. I'll, I'll just, I'll just take week. a nap then. What'd you say? Aunt? I sent you articles this week too. I kept one of them, and uh, I, I bet I, you know which one. I hope so. <laughs> okay. First thing. First thing is a, a question I I, I, I was uh, that was presented. Well, no, somebody was bitching on the internet. Okay, my homegirl uh, Rachel, who has been on this show, was bitching on the internet about uh, uh, an actor. I'll just leave it at that for right now. We'll come back around to it. And I literally had to like. I go, what what is going on? What is what is your beef right now? And and that person just drives me insane and I just don't like him and blah 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 blah. And somebody else dipped in, was talking about their religion and stuff. I will get to I'll get you out. I'm not gonna leave the actor out of it. I just wanna I just want I don't wanna uh I don't wanna uh, I wanna chum the water and fuck up anything right quick before I before I let y'all settle into this. But y'all got anybody that uh, any uh I guess celebrity where that that I'm gonna call just you just have an irrational or rational in your opinion uh hatred of that you just like fuck that dude I don't even know him or anything I just know what you know the press has said about this person and I don't like him does any do you have any of those that come to mind and if so uh, who no. are they and why I guess I I used to really really hate Julia Roberts like okay. when um back in the day when I could be a film buff. I used to love working for a dream, and she won over over an uh, Oscar over Ellen Burstyn for um, for Aaron Brockovich, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" Ellen Burstyn goes so nuck and futz in that movie. I mean, like, like really, really off the rails, and uh, like Julia Roberts just caught phones it in like she does every other uh, movie. She won her titties won that Oscar. <laughs> That pusher bra won her that Oscar because they made it look like she had a rack. Because Aaron Brockovich in real life, I like, apparently had a rack I, or has a rack. I don't know if Aaron Brockovich is still with us, and I don't want to make assumptions. I hope for uh, for those titties' sake, she's still with us. Uh, and yes, you are right. Ellen Burstyn should have took that 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 year, and everybody knows it. But you know, they everybody thought it was Julia's time. You know what I'm saying? So they was like, let me slide her one. It, it, uh, it should have been Ellen Burstyn's fucking time. She's been. Oh, okay. But now, now you know, uh, I, 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 yeah, there you go. But Your the, real, the real Aaron Brockovich is alive. She's 60 years old. What? There you go. With them titties? <laughs> Your beef, uh, in my opinion, it's an opinion, but it's, it, it, is, it is more legit than it's other than, than, than Rachel's beef. But I'll get to that shortly. Uh, uh, how about you, Gabriel? Mm. Everybody. Ah, this is a tough one. I got a lot of hate in my heart. Uh, See, uh, I just, I mean more like, like you hate Trivisano, but you you should hate Trivisano. Those are yeah, you can those see are some decent titties. <laughs> so so that that that, that, that I, I meant more like well, yeah, Trivisano's I guess a I, racist and a, and a blowhard and oh, okay. Mm. Don't I meant more of a uh, do you like maybe just an actor or, or you know or or a. a a, mu- a music artist or something like that. Somebody, like somebody you probably won't see at, um, at the store one day. All right. Ah, oh, God. You don't have to. That's okay if you don't. That, in I, fact, I know I do. I just can't think. <laughs> I thought you hated Bob Barker. <laughs> I love Bob Barker. The price is wrong, bitch. <laughs> He's delightful. Uh, uh, I'm gonna. Look, I need to think on this. Uh, do you want to go lunch? Um. So. Right now, it's like mostly politicians that come to mind. Like, I can't stand Ted Cruz. I can't stand Matt Gates out of Florida. Um, those are rational. Yeah, yeah I, I feel like those are rational. I think, I, I, like I said, I was thinking more along the line of a uh, of, of of like Columbus I guess, Short actors and musicians oh, and stuff like that. There, got it. Okay, okay. go ahead. No, go ahead. Like, I'm, I need time to think. Oh, I, was, I, was, I was not in the room when I when the beginning of this question was proposed, so I'm playing catch up. Okay, I I had the biggest beef with Richard Gere and his smirking ass for the longest time. Oh, Julia Just Roberts co star. Yes, yes, he's the Julia Roberts of 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 men. I mean, he just I. I I don't have an explanation. I just I just hated him, and I hated his smirk. I hated that guy who smirked like him on that. Uh, that uh, CBS show, The Mentalist. What are you smirking about? 
bitch. I just heard a podcast where they talked about the mentalist and how good a show it is. And I'm like, could I dedicate myself to watch a show that went for, I believe, six, maybe seven seasons of 22 episodes each? And I'm just like, I don't think I can do that. Dude, in this, <laughs> in this um, abomination of a world, you probably could. I just finished 12 seasons of um of the 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 Big Bang Theory with a br- on a on a feather. It was so easy. Those episodes are often I don't, I mean, 22 you know, minutes. Sometimes 20. sometimes no, sometimes 19 minutes long. Hmm. That show was wild short and full of commercials. Well, I so, watched it on HBO Max. Yeah. So yeah. So you could just get through it. Well, no, I mean, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like on, when they were on TV, there would be like a 19 minute episode, but you know, a 30 minute time block. Yeah. So that lets you know how much commercial they were just filling in the meantime. Yeah, I, I'm pretty so, much just doing like four and out yeah. if I wasn't stopping. Box anything come to mind? And, if, and again, like I said, like I told Gabriel, if, it, if not, it's actually fine, I, I think. Steph Curry. Boom. Oh. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, but again, I feel like that's legit. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like that's irrational. I guess I mean I guess it's in the sense that he didn't really do nothing to you, <laughs> but he did do something to you. You feel me? I'm not mad that he beat us for titles. I'm just mad that I think he's a bitch. Oh. Uh, I, I for the longest that's... time, I couldn't stand Kanye West. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, these are like I said, these, these are this, that's the thing. So this started with uh, Rachel's husband Matt posting on Twitter. Wasn't Tom Cruise like 20 years older than Katie Holmes? That's it. No. Up or down. That's literally what his post was. And he, and Rachel responded, yep, poor girl. And I was like, and my response was, I mean, she was grown though, right? <laughs> and, 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 and her response to that was, she was blinded by his star power, in my opinion, and then brainwashed by Scientology. I'm glad she made it out. And I'm just like, it's such a it's it's such a colossal reach. It's like you have no, you don't you don't know this. You don't know this in any way, shape, or form. You assume. But you definitely don't know. So I, my response was, but well, wasn't she also a very famous, successful actress at the time? Basically, why is it poor Katie is my question, I guess. It just seems like people dislike Tom Cruise and his faith choice, which I never understood. Her response was, Tom Cruise is an abusive asshole, LOL. Haven't you heard recordings of him screaming at film crews? And she definitely wasn't a, as big a star as him. My response was, D- didn't say as big a star as him, just a star in her own right. And the only yelling I heard of him doing recently was yelling at people not taking COVID precautions on set because it costs a lot of money now to shoot things because they have to have these extra over uh, COVID, uh, you know, protections, precautions in place. Also said, I never heard he was an alcoholic because I thought she wrote alcoholic in that previous one. She did not. <laughs> <laughs> Is he allowed to drink? A Scientologist allowed to drink? I, bruh, I don't know that man's religion. He, I just don't. But where is it at? When I put somebody else responded to my, my comment about faith choice, somebody who I don't even know, I think they end up erasing the uh, they post or whatever. I know people joke about this, but is he seriously the Jesus of Scientology? I, bro, how would we know? The G? Well, I guess like, like he is like the the flagship person. He is the Steph Curry of Scientology. <laughs> I mean, the Steph Curry of Scientology? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a solid one when you think about it. <laughs> I didn't even know that like Scientology was still a thing. I thought Leah Remy brought that shit to the ground. Oddly enough, I don't fuck with her as much because because of what she did. So really? somebody respo- somebody yeah. responded again. I don't know this person. This person I don't follow this person. They might she might follow uh, uh, Matt and Rachel. And their response to me was faith choice, more along the lines of abusive pyramid scam, in my opinion. That's your opinion. And I'm like, Keep it. And my response to her was, but to some, that's all religious. <laughs> so to me, it's just a faith choice. I, and so uh, when that started, I was just like, once upon a time, I, I, I had, I guess what you call the rational uh, dislike of Taylor Swift. And I didn't like Taylor Swift because of... That was another one for me. It was just all kinds of shit that just just, just came about from, from, from Taylor Swift. And then, and then as life has gone along and, 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 and whatever, one, I've gotten older. Two, I've just gotten to a point of why am I bothering? Give it a fuck either way about Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift don't know me. It can give a fuck about me. I don't know her. I don't know her truly. I know what I'm fed of her. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know what to do with that. I have nothing I can do with that. So I'm like, so so for a lot of reasons in, in, more, in more recent years, I've kind of gotten over the hump of a lot of people. I didn't like, uh, 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 what's, what's, what's his real name? It ain't Steph. He just, they were just talking about that on the internet earlier. What's his name? Walter? Walden? 
His, his real name is even Steph? No, Steph is his middle name. Stefan is his middle name, actually, if I'm not well, mistaken. Let's see, pull the stuff on her, girl. <laughs> It's, 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 it's the same as his... Wardell. It's Wardell. It's yeah, Wardell. Wardell, Wardell. Curry. It's, it's Wardell, Stephen Curry. And I guess yesterday at some press conference, somebody called him Wardell, and he gave him a look like, no, nah, nah, we don't do that. But he, again... He took, he took some uh, boss sauce, and he got better at basketball, and he's like, oh, it's not Wardell anymore. It's Steph. <laughs> well, yeah, for the longest time, I I, I uh, was uh, just grumpy with him because, you know what I'm saying, I, you know, the Cavs, and he he plays on the team that is, was the Cavs, uh, you know, sworn enemy, and so... I had I had sports anger, but as life is going on, I'm like I don't fucking care. He seems like a fine human being. He seems to do right by his family. He seems to do right by his society by by society as a whole. I can't be mad at this motherfucker anymore. I can be mad when he playing the Cavs. I just had to come to the realization that fuck with, that motherfucker really? might be the best shooter of all time. We're witnessing it, and it's just like uh, it's unfortunate that uh, you know you know that one of our homies had to get shot in the uh, shot in the crossfire. But shit, he might be the, one of the best shooters of all time. At least my, my problem with that kind of shit is though is like the media always seems to crown these guys way early in the process. Like they they're called, like saying Patrick Mahomes is the greatest quarterback ever to play the NFL. Motherfucker's only been in the league like three years, and they've already crowned his ass. He's won one Super Bowl, and like they're already like saying this shit. Like let the man play a career before you're trying to like jam shit down my throat. And I and I, and I understand that, but. Ass. LeBron well, was his name was King James before he even started playing. I yeah, I don't know, and, and people shit on him for it, and still to this day, he, they shit on they him. They use for it, it, they use it mockingly. But then, I, then I see him slam dunk it hard as fuck at almost forty years old, and I gotta be like, that nigga a king, like. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the it's the same way for me with uh Brady. I of course hate the fucking Patriots, but. Yeah, you got he, he playing for another team, right? playing great I mean, breaks, especially, yeah. especially, yeah, especially this season. This man old is uh, he only a little bit younger than me? Only a little bit younger than me, and out there balling out of control. And I got to respect it. And so, like I said, that's that, that's more, I guess, uh, what it is. Uh, and and who I'm I'm older than Rachel and I'm, and Matt, and so maybe I'm just a little further along in my I'm um, saying path. And I'm at a point where I'm just like, I guess. Like I said, I don't know. I don't go to Tom Cruise's church. I don't know how that shit works. I know what Leah Remini has told me about it, and I know what others have told me about it. And it to me, that just sounds like a person. Shifty. But to me, that just sounds like a person shifty, that right? doesn't have necessarily a beef with Tom Cruise so much as the idea of an older man dating a younger woman. She literally said he was an asshole, and that that woman was blinded by his star she? power. <laughs> She's the she. Just, she decided that Katie Holmes had just well, no hey, choice in the matter. I, I, hold on, let me look and for like, it, and then I'll talk about it. Keep on talking, guys. Well, uh, so, okay. No, go ahead. I was go just going to say, well, one, I think I hated Draymond Green uh, uh, more than uh, Steph Curry. Um, Agreed. I, I dislike Draymond. I just thought, I thought Steph was a bitch. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't like Steph Curry either. Uh, I didn't like Tom Cruise. I guess I'm just co-signing your dislike. <laughs> I, I, too, I too dislike these people. I don't know why. I never had a problem with Tom Cruise. I, I, I've i enjoyed a few of his films. I, I, I uh, fuck with Tom Cruise. But, that that video of the end of uh, Tropic Thunder where he dancing? <laughs> the best. The fact that in the last Mission Impossible movie, he, uh, one, did most of his own stunts. Jumped across a building, broke his ankle, and that's the that's the shot they had that they end up using in the movie because the best, it was the best shot when he landed and broke his fucking ankle. I I I I respect his work as an actor and a producer, and again I don't know his religion, I don't know what's going on with his religion, and can't call it. And don't even like I said again wouldn't even attempt. I mean to. like Katie Holmes divorced him. She's living her life, you know. Like it's with Jamie Foxx now, like oh. years ago. <laughs> no, they broke up. But she they, did. They, no, I don't think you. I thought Jimmy Fox was with um. Yeah. Oh God, the one old bitch from Jurassic Park. Laura Dern. Oh wait. Oh no, she was with Baron Davis, right? Yeah. And she fucked Common too. She liked black yeah. guys. I like that, but I still don't like. Jamie Fox was dating some some white girl that wasn't Katie Holmes recently, I think. No. Whatever. <laughs> that she says uh, citation needed because this is just a paparazzi Roxy picture. They assume that's her after getting uh, getting uh, divorce papers, but there's no citation. Okay. Uh, well, uh, but what is known is that every year, Lord Earth, huh? uh, before 
any woman he's been was been turning thirty three years old. He's he's left. Him. Yeah, he's been married three. He's been married three times, and in, in, in both cases, in in in, the, in all three cases, he he has divorced them at the age of thirty three. Yeah, three of them. So, uh, well, uh, many dr- not many. Can't call uh, me, uh, Mimi, yeah. uh, Mimi Rogers. Man, Rogers Another set of old yeah. lady, nice dude. Yeah, and Mimi Rogers was uh, older than him. You know nah, he believed in numbers. Mimi Rogers. Uh, Can't call she, I remember her I just, when I was uh, in my my youth. I know you do, Dan. <laughs> That's a name I haven't well, heard in I, quite I, some I, time. I, I, come here, come here, Danny Julia. Let me tell you about him. I, I, just... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to ride on that for too long. It's just something that interesting well, to me. I'm, and I'm glad you like, brought it up because um, it kind of intertwines something that happened to me the other day. So, like this one, uh, there's a, there's this program on the NFL Network called Good Morning Football, and the host is this uh, lady named Kay Adams, and I. I I follow her on Twitter, well, although I might have unfollowed her the other day now that football season is basically over for me. But um, I, I was following her uh, as recently as a couple days ago. And she posted up a little video of, like, her niece or something in, like, a Kansas City Chiefs uh, shirt like that she'd sent her auntie about how, like, she didn't like that her aunt said the Browns were going to beat the Chiefs on Sunday or whatever. And, and I commented on it, like, and I said something to the effect of, like, tell her it'll all be okay because the Chiefs are going to have to change their name within five years anyway, so no one will even remember that they lost to the Browns on Sunday. And then some random-ass person started, like, getting into my ass about, like, oh, you don't even know why they're named the Chiefs and people don't, shouldn't comment on things that they don't understand. Oh. And I'm like, And I'm like, look, bro. I'm like, I don't give a fuck what the team name is called. I was just making a joke based on current social climate. And then he's like, they're named the Chiefs after some firefighter in Kansas City. And I'm like, one, I already told you I don't care. I'm like, two, I already told you that I don't care what your team is called. And three, I can come out on whatever the hell I want. And my statement was based on the fact that teams recently have changed names, such as the Washington football team and my hometown baseball team. So uh, then the dude didn't say anything else. Then some other random ass person commented in saying that that person, what they told me was incorrect and that the, the football team was named after the mayor of the town at the time that the Chiefs came to Kansas City and that his nickname was Chief. And then I looked it up and Wikipedia agreed with that man. So then I said, seems you and Wikipedia are in agreement, unlike that other historian that chimed in with his information. So that this happened on, like, Thursday, right? This was Twitter so, or Facebook? This was, th- this was Twitter. I don't use Facebook anymore. Uh, uh, so this is, this is Twitter. These are random-ass people. And it all started because I said a joke to this lady who I've interacted with once on Twitter before, and, like, I've watched her show and shit. And um, so it's like... I wasn't being rude or anything. I just thought it was a funny joke. And so this motherfucker took it like real seriously. I tried to explain multiple times that I didn't actually care. I wasn't suggesting that I thought they should change the team name. I don't give a shit. And so then like the other person comes in, corrects him. Then that dude. And then the other, like the original guy, don't say anything else after that. This was on like Thursday, right? So Sunday comes along. The Browns play the chiefs. I'm tweeting during the game game ends. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm not crying or anything. I'm like, I'm like in shock and I'm upset, but like I'm tweeting through it, you know? And, um, one of my tweets said, fuck this hurts. Like, like the shock of it. Not like I'm sitting here in depression or whatever. And then that motherfucker that I hadn't talked to since Thursday, (laughs) we don't follow each other. He was waiting in the weeds to come out and he replied to my fuck this hurts tweet and he said laughing my ass off see you next year so that i wrote back go bills and then uh they said something like the bills are gonna be going home next sunday and it was at that point where my attack this man's soul popped up into my mind (laughs) and like the problem is like i can tell he's a trump supporter based on his tweets on his profile but then like i don't know what he looks like Other than the fact he told me he's part Native American. Oh. But, like, his avatar was, like, a picture of his daughter. And, like, I had that fork in the road in my mind where, like, my mind was, like, burn this man's roll to the ground and attack his child. But then I was like, (laughs) I I can't be doing that. You know, that's not, 
I can't be putting that shit out in the internet streets. So I took the high road and didn't reply and I just let it walk. But like I was real close to just making myself look real bad. I kind of feel like you you could uh, well you didn't have to burn his whole house down, but his shed needed to go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that picket fence needed uh, some smoke. I'm on his profile right now. <laughs> oh. I said I'd be better. Oh, you, this you year. went and looked up my tweets, huh? Yeah, I did. I can't help myself. I said. Gave the motherfucking Twitter investigator. Don't lose. Yeah. Don't be fucking around in these Twitter streets. He'll find your shit. Uh, I'm going to leave like, you be. Well, you like know I what? was trying my best not to cuss at anybody and like to, to keep it friendly. But like when that dude popped up out of the woodworks, like he was clearly stalking my page. Like he had that hate in his heart. And he he's like, I'm going to wait. Yeah. He, so like he was like, hold there's on, a part Abby, of me that's. Abby, Abby, hold on, baby. Hold on. Dad, daddy's got to. Daddy's got to burn somebody's soul real quick, baby. Hold on. <laughs> so, like, there's a part of me that's hoping that the, the Bills, like, I want the Bills to win this weekend anyway. But if the Bills win, I'm going to go to that motherfucker's page. And I'm going to find some fucking MAGA post that he posted. And I'm going to reply to it and be like, Josh Allen for life. Suck it. Go Bills. <laughs> Is it the uh, oh out, God. though? Well, I mean, if- uh, he's in concussion protocol. He's not officially out yet. Ah. Uh. They, they they lost a couple more today too. Well, at least for right now, have not practiced yet. So we'll see how that goes uh, for Sunday. But speaking of, if we're gonna be talking about football, we might as well slide on over to this. Kevin Stefanski voted 2020 NFL Coach of the Year by the Professional Football Writers Association and the Sporting News. Uh, Mary Kay Cabot. Who Problem is, is like that's not like the official NFL. No, ones. no, but it's the sports that, writers, and I yeah, hey, I got faith in them. Yeah, it's it's like my buddy uh, was talking about how he has a bet on it, like to win the official yeah. one. And I was like, oh, so he just won the Oscars and you were betting on the Emmys, okay. <laughs> uh, Mary Kay Cabot, who was the Browns beat writer for uh, the Plain Dealer and Cleveland.com, wrote this. And uh, I'm not going to go too far into it, but Kevin Scancy has been recognized for his efforts in his challenging first season as the NFL head coach to fancy who overcame a virtual offseason and the worst COVID outbreak in the NFL, was voted NFL Coach of the Year by the Pro Football Writers of America and the NFL and by NFL head coaches for Sporting News. Sporting News reported that other coaches receiving votes by their peers were Chiefs coach Angie Reid and Dolphins coach Brian Flores. Taking over for Freddie Kitchens, who went 6-10 in his lone season, Stefanski led the Browns to an 11-5 record in their first playoff berth in 18 years. The 11-5 mark was the best their best since returning in 1999. The Browns beat the Steelers, of course, 48-37 in a wild card round and lost to the Chiefs 22-17 in the, in the divisional round. Stefanski is also the leading candidate for the AP NFL Coach of the, year, of the Year, which will be announced February 6th at the NFL Honor Show. Receiver Odell Beckham, Beckham weighed in, tweeting, duh. <laughs> I dig that. So I, I, I uh, that again, the peep, the <laughs> his peers seem to believe he deserves this award. We'll see what the AP says uh, 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 here in a few, uh, I guess a couple of weeks uh, from about the time the show comes out. So that that I thought that was pretty dope, and you made that a uh, uh, seamlessly tie uh, in box. This guy is. Uh, um, I'm sorry to just to put a, the bow on this. This guy really is a Trump. Not, he's not just a Trump supporter. He's a he really won the election. Trump supporter still talking about Hillary's emails. Trump supporter. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's why, like, I didn't clap back like I, like I wanted to because I'm like, this guy's clearly crazy. How how deep can I really go before this is just like? Uh, can, this I think hatred definitely should if the Bills oh. win. Uh, go back to him. Oh, if the Bills win, I'm gonna go back and 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 you know, fair is fair. You know, like in fact, I turned the, the other cheese. I'm not gonna let that shit I think walk. you should go back to him and say, I guess you're no longer a lifelong Chiefs fan, huh? I don't. <clears throat> I already thought about putting that in the draft. <laughs> I don't know if you fact. should really go Cavericks on this, man. Well, if you left it alone. Just leave it alone. I'm being a bad influence, aren't I? The thing about it, though, was like, well, no, because I already had these thoughts. But, you know, like, I was just like, you're sitting here telling me that the, the fucking football team has nothing to do with Native Americans, which, like, I didn't even mention that. I just mentioned the change in the name, which I guess it's implied. But, like... You come at me, you tell me it's named after a firefighter and it has nothing to do with Native Americans. I'm like, well, I guess that they're putting out the fucking fires with arrowheads and tomahawk chop- chops then. Because, like, your, your fucking stadium's named Arrowhead Stadium with a giant fucking Indian arrowhead on it. And you're, you guys are doing tomahawk <laughs> chops until, like, the league told you to cut that shit out. 
So, like, remind me how it has nothing to do with Native American culture. And I like how he, he, he only becomes, you know, part Native American when it matters. He ain't talking about that shit on the regular, dog. That don't yeah, come no. up unless it has to come up to him to be like, well, I am part Native American, therefore my say over this matter so, holds I mean, more weight. Like, bruh. Well, what really got me about it all was, like, how are you going to tell me that I shouldn't speak on things that you think I don't know anything about? <laughs> and then you tell me the wrong information. Meaning you didn't know nothing about it. <laughs> Lord knows. <laughs> Whew, like I said, I, I, I got a full I got a full slate here, so we, let, let, let us keep it moving. Uh, uh, yesterday was uh, the inauguration of this great nation, the peaceful transfer of power. Not so peaceful this go around, but the transfer of power did indeed uh, su- uh, was successfully uh, concluded in uh, uh the 46th president of these United States is Joe Biden. The 49th uh, vice president of these United States is uh, Kamala Harris. Respect due. And uh, what I'm, uh, what I'm, one of the, one of many things I'm going to talk about uh, is uh, my man Eugene Goodman, who was a Capitol Police officer uh, who basically <laughs> helped save the Senate. And I don't say that jokingly. I mean, I guess we don't really know, but the Senate door was open behind his ass, and uh, he basically ducked and dodged and moved them people so they, they chased after him which means he was really putting himself on the line uh, so they would not enter the Senate uh, chamber and indeed people uh, more more backup showed up to secure the, the Senate chamber and get all the senators out of that chamber and while the while the crowd chased after the black cop to get a hold of bro I don't know where that was headed but shit but uh, Eugene Goodman a Capitol Police officer who divided the mob during the riot escorted uh, Harris Harris being uh, Vice President Kamala Harris uh, during the uh, during the inauguration yesterday. Uh, this is by Emily Cochran over the New York Times. Eugene Goodman, a Capitol Police officer who was captured on video facing down members of the mob that breached the Capitol on January 6th and diverting them from entering the Senate chamber and potentially saving lives, was elevated to serve as the number two security official in the Senate for the inaugural events on yesterday. This man went from Capitol Officer Private First Class. That is his, That was his title. To acting deputy Senate Sergeant at Arms. And again, he walked Kamala, you know, down the stairs, down the stairs up to the, you know, to the 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 uh, on the Capitol to be uh, sworn in. And also was by her side yesterday when uh, they did they do the traditional uh, uh you know peace out to the vice president. Now actually that's actually supposed to be the president saying peace out to the former well, president. Bitches be bitches. But you know, uh <laughs> the president the president before this one was a real bitch and decided he wasn't going to show up to the inauguration. Something that hasn't happened for, I believe they said something like 150 years. So just a real bitch. Historical bitch. B- the bitch in that motherfucker is, uh, is at historical levels. I want you to know that. But I love this black man who really just put it all on the line. Literally put his life on the fucking line. Went from private first class to dep- acting deputy senate sergeant at arms in two weeks. Best fucking promotion ever. Now he may not be, you know, he may not hold the, he may not hold the the sergeant at arms uh, title forever. He is indeed acting, uh, but uh, still, I think he'll be okay. And they are talking of giving him the Congressional Medal of Freedom, which is the highest honor you can get from a, 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 a from a basically from Congress. And I think that shit is is uh, is real dope. And I just like respect due to my man Eugene Goodman for for being out there doing the damn thing. Of. Uh, What else I want to holler about? This is from a slate. Mark Joseph Stern. Uh, Biden just began the biggest expansion of LGBTQ equality in American history. On the first day of his presidency, Joe Biden commenced the most sweeping expansion of LGBTQ rights in American history. In a historic executive order, Biden ordered every federal agency to clarify that civil rights laws prohibit sex discrimination, that, that, that prohibit sex discrimination, also prohibit discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. This move will extend non-discrimination protection to millions of LGBTQ people with regard to housing, education, immigration, credit, health care, military service, Peace Corps service, family and medical leave, welfare, criminal justice, law enforcement, transportation, federal grants, and so much more. While some of Biden's executive orders may be vulnerable to court challenges, this one is, is essentially bulletproof. It merely implements the Supreme Court's decision, Bostock versus Clayton County, something the Trump administration refused to do. In Bostock, the Supreme Court held that Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 bars employment discrimination against LGBTQ people. Title VII does not explicitly mention sexual orientation or gender, 
rev identity, whether it bars work workplace discrimination because of sex. But the court held that it is impossible to discriminate against LGBTQ workers without taking their sex into account. Technically, Bostock involved only one statute, Title VII, but as Justin Samuel Alito pointed out in his dissent, there are more than 100 other federal statutes that also forbid sex discrimination in language nearly identical to Title VII. Alito helpfully listed these laws in a lengthy appendix. Under the court's reasoning, in Bostock, each of these statutes should now be read to protect LGBTQ people. Biden's orders direct agencies across the federal government to bring their rules and regulations in line with Bostock. It instructs agency heads to review all existing orders, regulations, guidance documents, police, programs, or other agency actions that involve the statutes prohibiting sex discrimination, and it compels these officials to revise each rule and regulate in light of Bostock by extending existing protections to LGBTQ people. In some instances, the process will simply entail updating language to, no to note that anti-LGBTQ uh, discrimination is unlawful. In others, it will require the agency to write a new rule expressly disallowing discrimination on the basis of sexual identity, excuse me, sexual orientation and gender identity. We won't go on more than that. It's a, the, the, the slate knows how to write a story. I want to send this one out to every motherfucker that talk wild shit about Biden, talk about he's too much of a centrist and won't do anything to bring this country uh, further left. You was motherfucking wrong. You were a bunch of bitches. And uh, this is what happens when uh, the, the I'm going to say the side of good is in power because this is what, it is, what, this is what goes on. It's like, I don't understand. I don't think people understood how bad it was this last four years. A lot of it, a lot of it is, is seeming uh, you're starting to get an idea of now when you see uh, what it does. Like we didn't have climate information on the White House website until yesterday. They just erased all that shit. You know what I'm saying? They pretended it didn't exist and so forth and so on. There was so much bullshit in that Trump White House that is now having to be repaired in the early days of this Biden administration. And it's a fucking game changer. And I just put some respect to my motherfucking man's name. He also fired the uh, uh, counsel at the uh, National Labor Relations Board well ahead of his uh, end of his service. They don't normally, we don't normally do that. It's normally a very, uh, Washington is a very by the books kind of situation. You don't fire that guy. His, uh, his time would have been up in about nine months. But Unions was like, this dude is a bitch. I'm just going to throw a bitch around loose as fuck today. I apologize, people. That's where he at. You can blame Gabe. I mean, my Box for putting that <laughs> in my head. I didn't put that in your head. <laughs> <laughs> About who was... Uh, yeah, so, so um, it means that everybody who was, uh, you know, talking wild reckless about that uh, Biden wouldn't come in here and do these things was just essentially wrong as fuck. He came in and fired a guy who has been... Who Trump put in place as the council, uh, as, as uh, you know, the, the council to lead national labor relations, which is basically the people in charge of unions in this country, who was anti-union. He put an anti-union guy in charge of unions. That dude had to be fired. And like I said, yes, tradition would say, just let him live out his term, you know, and that would have been like, he would have been out in like nine months, but nah. Biden knew the deal, came in and told that motherfucker straight up, like, bro, you can, resi you can re resign or you can get fired. And he resigned. And uh, that's, and I, and I just, like I said, we coming in like that, we bring in, we bring in that kind of fire. Okay, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a respect. Well, one, I already do respect the man. I, I respect the Joe Biden uh, just because I know Joe Biden's story. I didn't vote for Joe Biden in in the in the, in the primaries. I didn't want Joe Biden was not my candidate. He became my candidate by, by way of just how I vote. I wanted Kamala Harris to be uh, president of these United States, and I'm okay with her being vice. But that was who that was who my candidate was. But I also know the fuck. I know Joe Biden is a, is a good dude, and uh, and I respect the hell out of him. And I love how quickly we went from calling Joe Biden a fucking. We, we just assumed he was a sexual predator out to put his crackhead son. I don't know in charge of what. I don't know what they thought was about to happen, but it's not going down like they thought it was. And I'm uh, I'm very. It's, a, it's an honor to see that. I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, yeah, I mean, you guys know because like I said, it was on my 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 G S day. I was in tears for a good chunk of yesterday morning. And I know people are like, that's so weird. My mama said it was like, was like why? Why are you so emotional about it? But I was just like, bruh, to, to be in the midst of, of, of history like this, because it is, it's a, it's a, it's a, these are historic times. And it just, it just struck me. Everything about yesterday struck me. It struck me to see uh, uh, 
Joe and Kamala out and walking around outside, even though it was scary as fuck to me for them to be out there. You know what I'm saying? Because I just worried the motherfuckers about the... We talked about it. We worried that these people who just beat down the Capitol door was like, don't try to do some, some froggy shit. But instead of being scared and hiding away, like I, like I kind of wish they would, he did not. He didn't shy away from it. He was like, I'm out here. I'm going to go to church. And he did. And then he's like, we're going to walk out here in the daylight and fuck what you heard. And we're going to get inaugurated out here in the daylight because the people need to know that. And it just, it touched my soul. It touched my heart. And I, and I fuck with it. So like I said, it, it did a lot for your mans yesterday. And uh, immediately uh, the Republicans started talking wild about his shit. So I mean, you know, so much for this unity that they claimed that they wanted. And uh, speaking of unity, GOP Representative Andy Harris tries to bring what? a gun into the House chamber. Republicans mm. keep complaining about the new metal detectors outside the chamber. Now we know why. This is by Matt Fuller over the Huff Post, Huffington Post. New security measures outside the U.S. House chamber prevented a Republican lawmaker from bringing a gun into the House floor Thursday. Representative Andy Harris, a Republican from Maryland, who was repeatedly flouted the who has repeatedly flouted the mag, magnetometers, which is what metal detectors are called, that were installed near the House chamber after the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol, set off metal detectors while trying to enter. When an officer with a metal detector wand scanned him, a firearm was detected on mm -hmm. Harris's side, concealed in his suit coat. Police refused to let Harris enter in, and the officer signaled a security agent that Harris had a gun on him by motioning toward his own firearm. HuffPost witnessed this interaction and later confirmed with a Capitol official that Harris did. was carrying a gun. HuffPost, <laughs> watched, HuffPost watched as Harris tried to get by. A, Harris tried to get another take member this, uh, take to this, take, take the this, gun uh. from him so he could go, so he could go, <laughs> so he could go vote. The member, Rep Representative John Catco. A Republican of New York told Harris he didn't have a license and refused to hold a weapon for him. Huffpo also heard Harris complain to some fellow members that he had asked his staff to remind him about the screenings. How does and he need a reminder? We knew about that shit. We're just regular ass people. <laughs> Harris then left on the elevator and 10 minutes later returned to the house chamber. He placed his cell phone and keys on the desk to the side, did not set off the metal detector, and was allowed to enter the house floor to vote on a waiver to allow retired Army General Lloyd Austin to serve as President Joe Biden's defense secretary. Again, I won't go no further than that. But uh, we just talked about metal detectors last week and uh, how these people kept just walking around it. So Nancy Pelosi, uh, who is in charge of the House, uh, made a point. I told you, we said, put up some tables, but they also now added some velvet ropes. Basically, they basically are blocking motherfuckers from being able to walk around. So now they got to go through the metal detectors. Basically, you go on, you set it off, and they wand you, and they be like, bro, what you got? It's, it's my giant belt buckle, or in this case, it's my heater that I keep on my under my suit. Most likely to find on a congressman from Texas. We all believe in Harvey Dent. But no, this this, no. this, this gentleman's from uh from Maryland. So there you go. So literally, he 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 probably lives up the road. So I I can't call it, won't call it, but what a wild ass fucking uh, situation we are in. And again, I'm. Uh, We'll see how it all goes. We'll see how this all plays out. Uh, this next story is uh, one box that uh, had uh, brought up the discussion the other day, and I actually want to I want to take it a couple of different directions. But uh, Netflix investors, we need to talk about churn. This one's from Bloomberg, but also the LA Times wrote about this same uh, topic this week. Churn is basically people signing up for streaming services and then you know at some point canceling them, bitches. They you know they keep them for as long as as long as they want to or as long as they they feel they need to. And then they skip out on them when they when they have come to um, you know the end of what they think they need it for. And uh, what what I guess has is basically people talking about is like you know people cop Disney Plus basically for the Mandalorian. They watch Mandalorian, Mandalorian wraps up. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they do it week by week, so it goes whatever uh, nine episodes. I think it's last season was so nine weeks, and they cancel their subscription. They they did two months of Disney Plus, and they want but what it is is you want to hold on to your. Uh, your your viewers you want to you know lock them down if you can and just since you can't in this day and age and uh they were saying how like it's not too many like it's just so it's, at this point it's just so many options for the for the uh for the game uh, for you know the, the the streaming service game that it uh it just it makes it so much easier for people to be like all right i'll, I'll dibble and dabble this month I'll, I'll i'll use this service next month i'll use this service so forth and so on and so i, I myself sat down and wrote down all the video services. Actually, I think I wrote out all the entertainment services that I have and how much they total out to. 
So I have Netflix. I have the big, the highest package you can have in Netflix, which is their 4K whatever package, uh, which allows you to be uh, up to four people to be watching Netflix at once. And that's 19 bucks a month. They just raised their price recently. I have Hulu, but I have the commercial commercial free version of Hulu. And because I have Disney Plus, it's a little less. So I pay 12 bucks a month for that one. I I have access to Amazon Prime, but the reality of it is Vanessa plays for Amazon Prime, so I don't count that in my list here. Just I'm just saying I have access to it. I have YouTube Premium, which is 16 bucks a month. That also comes with YouTube music and uh, and uh, some other like whatever stuff. So that's 16 a month. Uh, I also have two uh, uh, anime services because my kids fuck with anime and they love it. So I have uh, I have VRV, which includes Crunchyroll, and I have Funimation. Both of those are 10 bucks each. Uh, Crunchyroll recently bought Funimation, or the other way, Funimation brought Crunchyroll. So at some point, those two are going to combine, and we'll find out what I'll end up paying on that one sooner than later. I have CBS All Access, and I have the commercial free version of CBS All Access. That is $10 a month. I got that just based for the Star Trek stuff. But I guess I could watch a Big Bang Theory myself, Ant, because that's on there. Uh, I have Disney Plus, but because I have Hulu, I get, I get uh, both Disney Plus and ESPN Plus, which is not really worth it. But it, it's it, uh, basically, I, I get cut a deal. You watch those old and that's eight bucks a month for me. I also pay for spot. I also pay for uh, Spotify, and I pay for the family version of Spotify. And though I wrote that down as ten bucks a month, let me double check. Is that what I'm paying for Spotify? $17 a month is what I should have put for Spotify. Let me uh, fix that. So, so that is a total grand, a grand total of 92 bucks a month is what I pay for my, my entertainment, if you will. And some people are like, well, I mean, dude, uh, I mean, how much does cable cost and blah, 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 and so forth. And I I, I don't know. I pay a, a, I pay a pretty chunk for my internet service because I, I have... Uh, uh, very high speed internet and unlimited internet. You know what I'm saying? So I like I, I ne- I'm never going over my 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 data. I don't have a data cap anymore, and I pay for it because that's what I mean. That's what it takes. I have a house full of people, and we all and multiple devices that are all over it. So that's what I do. So I don't think I. I don't, plus, as you hear as you hear me say, I pay for no commercials. Every service I have, I make it a point. If they have an option for no commercials, I pay the no commercial <laughs> option because I don't fucking like commercials. Cable would come with com- cable would come with commercials. You know what I'm saying? That's what it just comes down to. Even on even no matter what, unless you just on HBO or something like that, you go get some commercials. So that's that's what I'm doing. I'm I'm avoiding uh commercials. Uh I'm sticking and moving on in that regard. And I was wondering one, what services you guys have? How do you feel about it? Do you feel like you should do you feel like cable would be the way to go for you? Or have you are you just like meh, I can make it with what I have? How often do you cancel your services? Are you a, are a part of this churn situation? Do you oftentimes feel, find yourself uh, canceling services and just and then starting them over whenever you care to you know use them again? I've done no churning myself. Uh, I've I've had Netflix since ever since I initially signed up for it, and I never got rid of it. And uh, just recently, this we we cheaped out and got the Hulu with the commercial, so we had to put up with two commercials between each uh, each segment. And we got Disney Plus. That's not that's not too bad. I haven't I haven't canceled any of it because right now I'm okay. watching Wandavision. In fact, I was like, well, I wonder if I should stay up and watch uh, episode three after this uh, after this podcast. But unfortunately, it didn't go up until midnight Pacific. Oh, son of a bitch! Yeah, I didn't mean so to get that don't, angry. Don't... Oh no, no, I learned that because I wanted to watch the last episode of, of uh, Mando, and uh, midnight came around, and I was like. Fuck you, bastards! You know what I'm saying yeah. <laughs> it's midnight Pacific, <laughs> so I could I could not I could not enjoy the last episode of Mando or any earlier than uh, I normally watch it. So same for WandaVision. I'm very hyped about WandaVision. I very much enjoyed those first two episodes. I uh, I watched them. I, I was kind of confused, but I figured they're going somewhere with it. All right, go ahead, Ann. Sorry about that. It's okay. Um, I have I do have cable. Um, but my cable is bundled. I have um, high speed internet. Um, but I think in about forty days or something like that, we'll see how cable's going because I think my cable bill goes up like seventy four dollars. Uh, but I have to, you know, renegotiate that um, because like I don't pay that much, and it's, it's like um, I got HBO and Showtime and Stars. I have quite a few channels, and it's like my cable bill is one thirty or something like that. 
with internet and um, cable. So Not bad. Um, I also have um, I have Sirius in my car, which is only like two dollars. Um, I have Hulu, which I am considering um, getting rid of. But then, um, not too too long ago, um, my cable got rid of stopped having NBC for like a month. So um, I'm glad I had Hulu during that time because my girlfriend watches The Voice and stuff like that. Um, so I, I've got Hulu, um, Disney Plus, and um, my girlfriend pays for Netflix. So I'm only really paying for um, cable. And Hulu and Disney Plus. So, I have WWE Network, but I'm planning on canceling it um, the end of March. So, I won't have that. I'll have that for like another month and a half, and then I'll, I'll, I'll get rid of that. And then, I have Netflix. Um, I use like the mid-tier one or whatever. Like, not the bottom tier, but like the one with the HD streaming. But I, but I don't have like a bunch of profiles because it's only me that uses it. You know, I'm not. I, I don't have any. No one has my login. And then um, I use somebody else's Disney Plus. Uh, I have access to a Hulu account through my Spotify, um, but it's like with commercials. But I don't use it anyway. Um, but I have it if I ever needed it. Um, I have access to the CBS All Access, which I guess is now yeah. Paramount Plus. But I never use that, even though like because I I have like um I've I'm like a premium member of this Browns forum, and uh, they I like have a partnership where we can use our logins to log into the CBS app for free. But I, like I said, I never use it. I have Prime, so like uh, that's just because you know I buy shit on there. Like that actually just re up for the year, like last week. Um. I use my buddy's cable login to watch sports on the Fox Sports app and the ESPN apps. So, like, I don't pay for that shit. Um, I, I mostly just watch free YouTube, though, to be honest. Like, I keep Netflix because, like, I like what, re-watching comedy specials and stuff on there. And, like, Netflix seems to be going all in. Like, they've been running ads about how they're releasing, like, new movies, like, every week this year. And it seems like as the time's going on, they're getting more big-name actors. Like, I started watching some uh, space movie with George Clooney the other day. And, like, The Rock's going to be in a movie on there. And then I saw that they just released one with Falcon where he's, like, a cyborg. So it's, like, they're getting, like, a lot of name actors and actresses on there now. So uh, Netflix has, like, value to where, like... Oh, and and I'm using the HBO free trial you gave me, but I'm about to cancel that because I watched everything I wanted to watch. I got another one. Cause I got um I got um whatever that punk uh, video game is too. So if somebody else needs it, let me know. But I also would like to say that every day um, we only have uh, we we got cheap Netflix. <laughs> so I'm not allowed to watch Netflix every day. Like I, I bow out, um, and I I pretty much use HBO Max every day. Um, HBO Max has a ton of shows. Um, not a ton of movies, and they're getting all the Warner Brother movies like um, this in two thousand twenty one, like as a like a, I don't know, a trial or something like that. Like it'll be on there for a month, and then it'll be off. First one was uh Wonder Woman uh eighty four. Um, next one, next big one I think is is either Godzilla. Or Mortal Kombat. I don't know which one's the next one, but yeah, their twenty one, their their entire twenty twenty one slate is going to be in theaters and on HBO Max for uh, thirty days, basically the first thirty days of release. So we ended up watching Wonder Woman the other day, and because my expectations for Wonder Woman had been so lowered, <laughs> because everybody in their mama just despi- said so spoke so ill of that movie, I really had a good time with that movie. I super enjoyed it, and. Uh, not saying it's the greatest uh, movie ever, but I just like I, I had fun with. It. I, was, uh, I love Pedro Pascal, great actor. He really, he really was fucking chewing the scenery, bro. I really dig that guy, man. Um, it it some, had some weird shit. About, I, there's all kinds of things that make you go, mm, "That's kind of weird." Wonder I was Woman. Christian Wiig in that but movie. Also, in general, great because Christian Wiig's fantastic. I felt, but just weird. I felt, I felt like that movie was just too fucking long, and the ending was just like, really, this is how we're ending it. <laughs> 
Like, I don't, I didn't hate, like, I liked the first Wonder Woman, and I went into this one, like, I got, Gal Gadot's hot as fuck. Like, how can I not enjoy, you know, Gal Gadot? But, like, just the movie felt like it was just fucking dragging, just going on and on and on and on. (laughs) And then for it to end, like, the end (laughs) felt like a wet fart. Scary? It was just, like, such a weak premise to be two and a half hours long. Whereas to me, it didn't even feel like it. It just, it just, it went by, and I, like I said, I just, I enjoyed it. I'm not again. I'm not saying this. This is, it. It is no. It is no Wonder Woman. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not even saying it's as good as the first one. It just, uh, I don't know. Had a vibe to it. Had a cool little uh, post credit uh, little situation or mid credit, whatever you wish to say. Uh, scene I thought it was pretty cool. I liked it. And that's all I can say about it. I liked it. Me. <laughs> Uh, if you got uh, whatever, it, uh, by the time this episode comes up, your thirty days is up. So sorry, champ. Uh, if you ain't watched it by now, you got to wait <laughs> until uh, it comes it's back. It's over around. three days. Because uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I I used that free trial you gave me to watch Wonder Woman. I watched uh, the Fresh Prince reunion mm-hmm. special, and then I watched uh, the Flight Attendant. Yeah, you know uh, why you still have it, and I suggest to anybody who has access to it. Check out that Harley Quinn yep, cartoon. Very good. Fantastic. Right. Fantastic. Uh, the, the flight attendant was good. Uh, did you watch the, uh, what's the show with um, Anna Kendrick? Love something? Or just, okay. Heck no. The sex style thing or whatever you were talking about? Well, it was on Quibi. Now it's on Roku. So you got oh. Roku, you can watch it. Well, I, I did not because uh, everything I watched, I just named. Oh, and I watched the third Hobbit movie. Because I thought I hadn't watched it and then I got 20 minutes into it and I went, oh, I, fuck, I haven't seen this before. <laughs> Right on. But like I said, I, I, I have had Netflix, you know, the Netflix, like the non disc version of Netflix, you know, you can still get disc in the mail uh, since 2008. Uh, haven't missed a beat. I think I might have missed like a month at some point where I was like, you know, times was tough and I couldn't pay for it or something. But basically, I, I, have, I have had Netflix since then. Uh, Hulu, I've had since uh, Hulu first got on the Xbox as well. Um, like I said, VRV Funimation. Funimation, I just got like literally I just started that maybe a month or two ago. Uh, the the kid, there's some show they want to see on, it, and I was like, fine. And uh, and uh, so again, I don't pay for parking anymore. It's it, you know gas is cheap. You know what I'm saying? I don't drive too much, so whatever, whatever. I, I get you some Funimation. Go for it. The thing about it though is, it's like I feel like there's a reason why like I, I want to cancel some of them. like like the CBS ones and the Hulu like I'm not paying for them they're just included with the shit I already use like I still use Spotify even though like I'm not traveling to work like I do listen to music sometimes at home or like the times I do get in the car or like sometimes if I'm in the shower I'll throw some music on so like I keep Spotify around but and then the Hulu comes with it but if I didn't have that I wouldn't have Hulu I mean even though I don't use it and then the CBS, I never use it, even though like I have access to it. But if I didn't have it, I wouldn't have bought it. Um, WWE Network, I kept it for so long because I watched wrestling. But like, what? I got sick of wrestling like three months ago. I haven't watched wrestling in months, and I'm kind of like tired of Vince McMahon's bullshit and like the how much money they donated to the Trump campaign. So I'm gonna take my money off of there. When, once WrestleMania is done, I'm not getting. WWE Network again for the rest of the year. I just don't care, and I don't feel like giving them money. And then, like, I the problem comes into like right now. Like, if I had Disney Plus, I'm not sure if I would keep it every month because, like, I don't know if I'd want to pay twelve dollars a month or whatever it is. I don't. I don't even know. I'm just going because it seems like most of them cost around like twelve bucks a month. I don't know if I'd want to pay 12 bucks a month to watch four episodes of WandaVision, you know, like you know, four weeks in a row and then have to pay another $12 to watch the next four and then another $12 to watch the last two. I'd rather just wait until that third month, get the, the shit and then just hope that for the last two months, no one yeah. spoils shit for me. Um, thankfully I'm just using my buddies and, uh, you know, so I, like, I don't have that dilemma with when it comes to that. But, like, if I was paying for it, like, I don't know if I'd want to pay $36 when I could just wait two months and then pay the $12 the one time. Because there's not much else on there that I'm going to want to watch. Like, 
I could get bored and want to throw on an animated movie or whatever, but like I have so many other options on stuff that has back like catalogs of things that I could throw on out of sheer boredom that are either free or I already pay for that I don't plan on getting rid of. That keeping Disney around every month isn't something that like I really want to put my money into. It's just trying to be smart about my usage because I can only watch one thing yeah. at a time, you know. And, like, the majority of the time, I'm just watching YouTube for free because it's on my TV. Like, I watch Good Mythical Morning pretty much every day and Mythical Kitchen. And a lot of the sports talk stuff gets posted on there, whether it be through the actual oh, networks oh. or through a Chinese guy. Um, um, and then, like, a couple of the, the YouTube channels that I watch, like, their videos, they do lives. So, like, every Tuesday night from 9 until I go to bed, I'm watching the One Whiskey Tube channel. Like, and that shit's free. So it's like I end up like not needing to pay for a lot of these, sh- these things because I'm watching free TV uh, as it is. You know, it's just I can only like I said, I can only watch one thing at a time. So paying for six different streaming services doesn't really make sense to my hey, bottom line. You know, it, it is it is because um, I have I, it's, it's just it's, like, it's, it's the entirety of my family. And I don't I'm not saying that jokingly. It is it is uh, my partner, my children, my mama, my sister, my nephew, my brother that are all you know, watching these various things that I pay for. I am the person who entertains yeah. my family. It's just what I do. I- yeah, I mean, like, you got kids yeah. and shit, like, and a girlfriend, so, like, it makes sense that, like, each person in the house, like, you guys probably don't all watch TV together all the time. You all have your separate interests and whatnot. Yeah. Like, I get that. Like, you have multiple people, so, like, you're, you're sharing the bills when it comes to that. I, however, am a single man, um... You know, with no one, no one leeching <laughs> off of me. I'm leeching off of everyone else, actually, at the moment. Um, but like, one, once like the cable service that I had like ceased to exist, like they 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 you know closed up shop over a year ago. I was just like, fuck it, like because I was only keeping it around to watch two things that like one was like I was watching football with it, and then I was watching wrestling. But, like, I started to not give a shit about wrestling, and then football season was ending anyway. And then I have Rabbit Ears on the TV, which gets all the channels. The only one I didn't get yeah. was ESPN. But then, like, my buddy gave me his cable login, so I could log into the ESPN yeah. app with it. So, um, you know, I didn't. And then, like, the NFL Network games, they stream on Amazon, which I get with Prime anyway that I already had. So I was like, well, why would I go get Sling or something else? For 60, 65 bucks or Hulu uh, Live or whatever mm. the fuck they call it to watch like sports when I can just watch it on the rabbit ears or with these other two streaming services that I already have access to. And I don't even give a shit about wrestling, really. I was like, I've lost, I've been losing interest with wrestling for like the last year and a half. And like, I was only half watching it when I was, when I had the cable. So at that point, I would have only been paying cable so that my buddy yeah. could watch it. And I was like, at this point, I'm not spending sixty dollars a month for somebody else. So I, I just decided not to re up, and uh, I put that money towards other shit. Like I, I got Netflix. I had Netflix back in the day when you could um, yeah. get the discs. But then, like, I canceled it when I moved out of my mom's house into my buddy with my buddy, and then I was using my uh, buddy's Netflix for a while, and then then I was using my other buddy's Netflix. But then, like, when I canceled cable, he canceled his Netflix. And because uh, he was, like, he was wanted to watch baseball, but I didn't want to go have Z's anymore. So then I didn't have Netflix for a while. But then this past summer, there was some stuff, some movies on Netflix that I wanted to watch. And so uh, they offered, like, a 30-day free trial to, to come back and, uh, you know, check it out. So when I got done with the free trial... I just realized that, like, of all the streaming services, Netflix was the one that, like, I wanted to have around constantly. Because, like, like today, I threw on, like, a, the Chappelle, one of the Chappelle specials, and then I was watching the Bill Burr special. And then, like, they do put up some, like, interesting original programming. Yeah. And there's, like, a pretty decent backlog of movies that shuffles in and out of there. And so, like, Netflix, I feel, is, like, is the best overall to have like, year-round, like, to not churn, I guess we'll say. But then, like, the rest of them, like, I guess it depends on your needs because, like, I don't feel like at this point Disney Plus hyped up their shit for so long before they officially launched, and then when they did finally launch, it had, like, one fucking thing, and then they've been, like, living off the glory of that one thing for (laughs) the last year and a half. And now, like, 
it was it was a really good thing. But once that sh- that one really good thing's first season ended like over a year ago, I had access to Disney Plus and I had no fucking use for it for ten months. So like. Like, I was always commercials so like, oh, WandaVision's coming, Loki's coming, Winter Soldier and Falcon are coming. Like, they've been coming for, like, two <laughs> years now. Like, all these people have paid all this money to, like, what, watch, like, Lion King? Like, it's it's yeah. good and it's nostalgic, but, like, I need I, I, I need more, you know? And, like, I, I like, with, with Disney+, Plus like, you're almost, like, forced to get, like, the bundle with, like, Hulu and ESPN or whatever just to have, like to feel like you're getting your value. Like, now I know, like, WandaVision's finally fucking here, but, like, it took, like, 13 pandemic months. Shit. 12 or 14 I mean, months or some shit. It is because of the pandemic, the expectation was that they would have rolled up. Black Widow would have come out in, let's say, what, May or June of last year, and then they rolled into uh, WandaVision and then Falcon Winter. Everything was well, Everything had a plan. Pandemic threw everything into chaos. They, they, uh, every, just about every movie that you give a fuck about basically got pushed back to October today. All the fucking studios just all starting to just said, okay, October's when we think we can get back into movie theaters. So the new James Bond movie got pushed back and a few other things. So it just, it just is what it is, man. I, I hear you though. And like I said, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying, uh, I'm not anti the ideal of churn. Like I said, if, if, if it's not doing it for you and, uh, that's the best why that that that's what they've always been sold to us as what's great about these services is you're not under contract and you can cancel whenever you want. And people simply are doing that. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? They're simply saying, okay, for right now, I don't need X service. And uh I fuck with it, man. I just I just like that. I like that. I I enjoyed the the idea of it. And thanks for uh, pointing that story out to us, Dan. Cause like I said, I thought it was a I thought that was some good uh show the, the name stuff. Of that show uh, is Love Life by Andy Kendrick. Um, probably the, fact, but the the best thing um, I watched on there so far. I know. Uh, last story is uh, one uh, aunt sent to me. This is from uh, ScienceAlert.com. Uh, Michelle Starr wrote this. Scientists have described a dinosaur's butthole in exquisite detail. <laughs> when a dog-sized Psittacosaurus, P-S-I-T-T-A-C-O-S-A-U-R-U-S, was living out its days on Earth, it was probably concerned with mating, eating, and not being killed by other dinosaurs. It would never even have crossed its mind that 120 million or so years later, scientists would be peering intensely up its clacker. A clacker? Uh, However, uh, that's a new term. Clacker I've never is heard. the word they use there. Clackers are uh, new one fact, I mean. In fact, I'm going to just give that a quick look up and see whose slang that is. Quick little Google search. Uh, Australia, New Zealand is who is who spits wow, that particular fire. <laughs> However, that's precisely <laughs> what they've done, yielding the most detailed description yet of a non-avian dinosaur's cloaca, the catch-all hole used for peeing, pooping, mating, and laying eggs. The Swiss Army knife of buttholes <laughs> is common throughout the animal kingdom today. All birds, amphibians, reptiles, even a few mammals possess a cloaca, but we know little about the cloaca. Chloe K, I guess the the, the uh, whatever of dinosaurs. What's that word? Plural. Forgive me. That word was not coming to the plural version of Chloe K. Chloe K, of dinosaurs, which, which including their anatomy, what they look like, and how the animals use them. I noticed the Chloe K several years ago after we had reconstructed the color patterns of this dinosaur, using a remarkable fossil on display at the Seckenberg Museum in Germany which clearly preserved its skin and color patterns, explains paleobiologist Jacob Venter of the University of Bristol in the UK. It took a long while before we got around to finish it off because no one has ever cared about comparing the exterior of cloacal openings of living animals, so it was largely uncharted territory. So this is what the team did. Comparing the fossilized cloaca to modern cloacae, the specimen is the only non-avian dinosaur fossil known to have preserved, uh, a preserved cloaca. But due to the way the fossil's positioned, the internal anatomy of the opening has not been preserved. Only the external vent is visible. That means there was a lot of information that researchers couldn't gauge. We found the vent does look in many different groups of ter- tetrapods, but in most cases it doesn't tell you much about the animal's sex, said anatomist and animal reproductive system expert uh, Diane Kelly of the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Those distinguishing features are tucked inside the cloaca, and unfortunately, they are not preserved in this fossil. 
Even so, the exterior anatomy could contain some pretty interesting clues as to what some dinosaur cloacae look like and how they were used. Although the dinosaur cloaca is unlike any other known modern animal, the team was able to identify several features in common with the crocodilian reptiles, such as alligators and crocodiles, and birds. There was a dorsal lobe that, se- that seems similar to the cloacal protuberance seen in birds, a round swelling near the cloaca <laughs> during breeding season, where the male stores sperm. Although, again, with the internal anatomy, it's impossible to say for sure. Secondly, the cloaca had lateral lips on either side of the opening, much like those of crocodilians. Unlike crocodilians, however, Pistichosaurus, whatever, had them arranged in a V shape. Thus, the opening could be seen, can be, could have been slit shaped. It also could have been round, like in birds. There's a lot more here to go on about the cloaca of a dinosaur, and that's interesting. I just thought that title, scientists have described a dinosaur's butthole in exquisite detail. Let's yeah, I've seen that article and I was like, man. This would be perfect for the show. Exquisite detail. <laughs> well, we learned the exquisite detail and clacker are some words we can walk away oh, with yeah, the clacker. on this. <laughs> the Aust- Australian slang for anus. I'm going to shove it right up your clacker is what it says here in the... Uh, wow. It sounds like we, we're watching an episode <laughs> of The Boys. Uh, again, uh, as, 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 as we want to wrap it up with uh, some kind of expedience... Uh, I don't know, unless you just happen to have something you got to talk about. We can just keep this posse rolling. You got anything that you think, I was going to talk about this, T, and I want to talk about nope. it? Anybody? Mm-hmm. Eh? Well, All right. I, 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 I supplied know about... that, last, um, that last article. You did give me that last article. I'm saying it's a clacker of an article if ever there were one. <laughs> <laughs> you know how we do? After we after we conclude all the other business, we, 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 we walk it on over to Reddit and... Uh, and visit Am I the Asshole? I, I have pulled several this week, but I have to tell you this first one we have to read because of the comments in it. I went to go click on the story, you know what I'm saying, and it, it had been deleted, so I do have a screenshot of it. But in the comments, it was like, we went and looked this person up. And so that is some stuff. We, we, we will discuss that one. But I'll tell you the title of it right now, and uh, we'll come back to it in a bit. Am I the Asshole for telling HR that a woman in my office doesn't wash mm. her hair? Mm. We'll come back. Don't worry, we will be coming back to that one. Here are the other options you have, your guys' choice as always. Am I the asshole for hiding my girlfriend's sentimental forks? <laughs> I'm sorry, the very idea made me laugh. Am I the asshole for keeping the cat, keeping a cat, the cat that I've seen lost posters for? What? Why would you do that? This man is literally kid, has kidnapped a cat. I just, I just want you to know that. Am I the asshole for refusing to visit my brother and his newborn because of what he did two years ago. And this last one, which kind of fits in with the whole, you know, whatever we were, we were just, what we were just discussing. Am I the asshole for logging everyone out of my Hulu account? <laughs> I thought you were going to say, am I the asshole like a dinosaur's clacker? <laughs> oh, man. Is this, is, am I, is it, is it, am I the clacker in Australia? Do they, do, do they have a different, like, vibe? Uh, so, uh, which of those, if any, uh, besides the one I told you, I'm going to read, uh, sp- uh, speak to you guys the loudest. I wonder what that guy's brother did. The Hulu one seems like yeah, on topic right now. That. That's good. In fact, we'll do that. We'll do that one first. Continuity and so forth. Am I the asshole for logging everyone out of my Hulu account? So I have Hulu and Disney <laughs> Plus that I pay for myself. I currently live. I currently live with my parents and my brother. I let them all use my streaming accounts as long as they are on their own profile so I don't watch their shows and Mess lose up the their Mess algorithm. Server. I don't... I hear you. Watch their shows and lose their spots and vice versa. Unfortunately, my mom has not been doing this and I ask her not to multiple times with Hulu. She watches my shows on my profile. I've lost my spot in so many shows just because, just because since my profile is the first choice. My brother even told her not to do not to, so I won't lose my spot. She resorted to watching shows that I don't watch that I don't watch on my profile, which is fine, I guess. But I literally made my parents their own profiles to avoid this. We, when we had Netflix, this wasn't an issue. Every every time I ask her to use her own profile, she sighs dramatically and says, "Fine." She did it again today, so I logged everyone out on the website. The only person who knows the password is my brother. He says I took it too far by doing that, but I am paying for Hulu, not my mom. 
Am I the asshole for logging everyone out because my mom doesn't respect my wishes? Edit, for those asking, she doesn't let me pay rent. Why I'm 110% okay with paying rent. We have a deal that if I am in school, I, then I don't have to pay rent. But I'm not going to school right now. She brought it up recently about charging rent, so that could change. So somebody must have brought up if you are you if you paying you ain't paying rent. Blah 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 blah. Just just so we get a feel for the room. Is this person an asshole no. for this? No. No. Uh, he just laid down some clear boundaries that are easy to follow. Really, all you have to do is click here, here, and you're you're good. And mom couldn't do it. I would agree if this person lived on their own, but the fact that they're leeching off the parents still, I feel like. You got to just suck it up. And so I do kind of feel like, like they're a bit of an asshole here. And uh, if anything, just make a different profile and use that one and let your mom keep using the first one. Like if she's going to like click on that one anyway, just go make a different one and use, use that the one. mom profile. The way that she, that she not use it. Yeah. I, uh, in my opinion, this does not rise to the level of asshole on either, on either person. It's just some old lady who just like. Mm. Did they say her mom's age? Who? No, but, you know, you're taking an assumption. If the person living at home, that, I mean, and, and they black, that mom could be 37 for all we know. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. I am I, I am. I am. making a rich. I just kind of feel like even, no no matter what age a kid is, if a kid putting out boundaries, just like one of my kids is Kissy Huggy. The other one ain't. And no matter what their age is, if I got, if they got something in the, in the refrigerator, I, I, I'm not supposed to eat it. And no matter what age you are, somebody a kid or a set boundaries, you, uh, you can be at it. The mother is kind of being a dick about it. Not an asshole, but dickish. Yeah, I, I'm not saying that like she's in the right necessarily. I guess I'm just thinking about it from like, I know how expensive it is to take care of yourself. And I feel like when you're still at home leeching off the teat for free, Sometimes you just got to suck some shit up that you don't like and just kind of figure out a way to slog through it. Like, I just don't know if I could go to live in someone's house and, like, tell them how to use my shit that, like, I could easily just make a correction and avoid the situation when I'm living for free. And, like, apartments these days, like, are expensive as hell. Like, a $12 a $12 Hulu login is a lot cheaper than a $700 one bedroom. Uh, I, I hear you. Again, I don't think either one of them rise to the occasion of asshole. I think it's just kind of dumb. Yeah, th- this is such a minor instance. It's it reminds me kind of like the one we read a couple weeks ago about the girl not wanting to wear a bra. Yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> uh, I, let's I see what think the, about uh, that as well. No, nah, that one was that one was very problematic. Well, I mean, just from the like, I'm I meant in the comparison. Some of them living under their parents' roof and having to cheap, combine. Like still living and living there under the parents' home, you know, like. That, that kind All right, of. let's check out some of the comments here. Uh, not the asshole. I'm in the same boat as you, even though I have even more accounts and everyone uses their own profiles. It's really not that hard. I think you can maybe give her one more chance if she asks, but after that, make it permanent if it continues. And the person, the the the, the OP responds. That's that that's what I was thinking. Uh, someone else responds to that. I was in the same boat as you. First account being mine, and my mother constantly using it, so I lost my place. Do you know what I did? Change the account so that, that, that hers was first. Parents are old and sometimes do things like this. We just need to give them a free pass on such small things once in a while. Doesn't hurt changing your account. It doesn't hurt you changing accounts instead, does it? Like we, we, we just came to that conclusion even before we read that. Yeah, just flip it. Put her shit first. There you go. You can't go wrong. I mean, that shit, I don't understand how you didn't do that first to begin with. Like, oh, all right, well, I know how to mm-hmm. fix this. Let's just move some shit around. Yeah, yeah. This this seemed like such an easy fix that I well, don't understand how it got probably to just point. like in their head. You know, saying that they that they forget to you know come out of that that, that shit every now and again. So it's just I mean, it's so probably random. not the fact of the matter that the action. It's probably the amount of time she probably had to tell her mother. Like for sure, and but I'm saying at some point, be like I didn't told you this like six times, and your ass still don't, don't seem to be getting it. Mm, here's a workaround. You know how many times we got to work around shit just in the job? In life, I'm always prepared to work around things because, you know what I'm saying, it just no makes sense. Vanessa watches everything on my Hulu, uh, my, my Hulu login, like if, if she on whatever. She has her own. It, her name is right there. All she got to do is click down. I believe one. I think she's the second person. Never does it. So nothing, my, nothing in my Hulu is Hulu ever right. and, and uh, <laughs> Hulu was one of those things where, like, 
unlike Netflix, it's like you slide over and it, um, you know, you, you got a picture. Netflix makes it more user-friendly. Hulu's just like, mm-hmm. that shit always sticking. Like, you got to go, it, it, Hulu's not very user-friendly. Hulu's UI uh, leaves a lot to be desired. You are correct. Netflix makes that shit, it's literally front and center. These pretty, you know, pictures right here, you know what I'm saying, of your choosing and, and names right there and so forth. You are 100% so correct. maybe that, that 37-year-old mom does lead a little bit more credit. Uh, a little young, hot mama. <laughs> Let's find out what this brother did two years ago, and then I'll do that last one, and we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Uh, am I the asshole refusing to visit my brother and his newborn because of what he did two Tell years ago? Tell me to ago. put on the bra. <laughs> I, male 33, lost my wife two years ago. Right now, I'm a single dad of my nine-year-old son. My wife had cancer. It was too much for her to take, but she always said that our son was her strength. She was receiving treatments and spending time at home with our son. She always said that she wanted to spend as much time at home with our son as possible. She just knew. She just knew. I took care of our son's needs as well as, as, well as, as household. Her family was very supportive. Her sister helped by driving her to the hospital, but my family didn't do much. My brother, age 37, kept coming over and making comments about how our home was a mess and unhealthy for our son, claimed that he was being, ne- ne- claimed that he was being neglected and asked what would happen to him after my wife passed away. He bluntly said that it was unfair for our son to live like that and kept being negative and telling those things to my wife, making her feel bad and worried. I told him, stop coming over and just leave us alone. I was angry with him. I went and, and with him, I went low contact. And one month before my wife passed away, I had a visit from CPS. My wife was home when they came. They did an interview with me and my son. I explained my wife's, con- my wife's condition and they talked to her sister and, and informed me that someone called them and filed a report about our situation and possible neglect in our house. Eventually, nothing came out of the report. My wife never stopped crying. She got very sick that night. And I'm sure that she felt helpless as if she was a bad mother. I assured her that she was, in fact, stronger than most people and that the report was nothing. So she could, she could, she shouldn't had been worried, but she couldn't help it. My dad called me a week after telling me to be careful about my brother reported me to CPS and was bragging oh. about it, hoping they take oh. they take action. I was livid. I got into a huge argument with him and all who defended him and I cut contact with him right then. After my wife's funeral, no one visited except her, for her sister. I talked to my family, but I haven't talked to my brother for two years after what he did and all the stress he caused my wife. Last week, my mom called me to tell me my brother and his wife had a baby boy and wanted me to bring my son to visit him. I refused. She called me unreasonable and told me to let my son meet his cousin and uncle, to just forgive and forget. She kept pressuring me despite, say, despite saying I don't want to. My dad himself said it's time for us to reconcile and, and get together as a family. I ended up yelling at them that I won't forget the scene my brother made before my wife passed away and claiming that we were bad parents, knowing that we're struggling and doing all we can. They just kept insisting that I visit and see how it goes, but I still refuse. My brother didn't apologize. I only talked to my parents. This is his first baby with his wife. They had issues with miscarriages in the past. That's where he wrapped this this up. That brother can suck the fattest dick uh, um, that he's ever seen. Fuck that dude. Yeah, that dude was more than an asshole. That he would have he would have got the the hands and a brick. Fuck that dude. <laughs> uh, that is uh, that is. I would have been. Oh my god, I can't imagine that shit. Like I'm going through it, through it, and you know if 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 it's something fucked up in the house, and you my brother, come help me, nigga. Damn. My house not clean or a clean to your liking? Well, my guy, clean my house. Like, not not gonna do that. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's so true. I just get, man. I just get like yeah, in a you... funk sometimes. Like, I don't feel like washing dishes tonight, and I I'll wash them tomorrow. <laughs> I couldn't imagine the the fucking funk you would be in. Like, the the mother of your child is fucking dying, and you got to deal with that shit in real life for for months or how long it took. And he's like, oh, okay, I'm up. I mean, what was it? Dog shit everywhere? <laughs> it couldn't have been, it couldn't have been t- that terrible, but, you know. Bro, you gonna, you gonna call CPS on my kids and brag about that shit? Yeah. That shit sweet? He would've got them hands. Bro, you look, you, 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 
hands and other things could have been caught. Dan, what's your opinion on that one? I would have fucked up too. I would have hit my hands. dad one time. I would have probably only hit my dad like once or twice. But I'm like, hey, you got your son back? Man, that's unbelievable. You, you, that woman's dying days were fucked. Because uh, because of, of, of that bullshit. Are you kidding me, bro? He can eat all the bags of dicks, multiple bags of dicks, like a grocery store yeah, situation. Ones too. Uh, let's see. Emotionally immature people make terrible parents. Emotionally immature people are inherently selfish and entitled, who prioritize satisfying their own needs and feelings while disregarding the consequences for other people. They tend to view their family as extensions of themselves and or objects to do with as they please, rather than in, in independent people with independent personalities needs and wants caring more about their image and what other people think than what their children feel this is why the, they play favorites with their children making a golden child out of the one behaving most like themselves while scapegoating the one telling the truth the truth are not welcome they disturb the selfish entitled parents ideal about the family image and truth hurts their feelings and and are thus bad as is the truth sayer Entitled parents view a view, view love as, as as a limited resource, so their children are often fighting against each other in order to be loved by their parents. Single children from such parents become super messed up from their parents' shifting view of them, as they must feel fulfill all the roles in the abusive family. Man, this person really wrote some shit. For people who grew up in a loving, caring family surrounded by infinite love and as subjects in their own life, the dynamics of abusive families are almost impossible to understand. A word of warning, failing to establish healthy boundaries enforced with natural consequences for our demanding and difficult child means means to raise a child that will become a selfish, entitled, emotionally immature adult who will abuse other people. As the pandemic has made abundantly clear to everyone, being selfish is evil. ECA, ETA, you guys, thanks for the love. To all my siblings suffering out there who grew up with less than stellar parents, I'm sending in... Man, there was a lot going on there. Maybe I missed something before that. That's what I understood. Can't call it. That shit really went down a path. Uh, this motherfucker just was uh, was preaching about I, uh, <laughs> basically basically calling that dude's parents terrible and his sibling terrible. And I co-signed that immediately. Uh, Reddit did say this person is not the asshole. I fully agree with him. He was not the asshole in this situation. And uh, that dude is actually uh, lucky to have not uh, seriously caught the fade and possibly some shells to his ass. So... That's just how I'm at on that situation, man. Jesus fucking Christ. As for the one I told you guys I would read, like I said, the, the main reason I want to read it is because, like I said, I saw some of the comments and I was like, get the fuck out of here. Am I the asshole for telling HR that a woman in my office doesn't wash her hair? I work in a small office with several other people. Due to COVID, we have mostly been working from home, but we work in the office a couple of days a week. Last week, I overheard a conversation in which Tina was telling other, another co-worker that she's glad to be able to be working from home because now she doesn't have to wash her hair as often. Apparently, it's a thing in which you don't wash your hair too much to make it less greasy. Why anyone believes that is beyond me. But here's the thing. There's a virus going around, and we've been trying to convince people to wash their hands. And this girl is coming to work every day without washing her hair? What? I'm sorry, but that is nasty. If you want to sit on your couch and be dirty, so you, so you still nasty, but I don't want you near me with your greasy head. So I went to HR and filed a complaint. I thought they took me seriously, but then yesterday I got an email from Tina telling me I need to mind my own business and stop oh. being a Karen. I responded <laughs> that I don't want to get sick and that I would appreciate working with people with good hygiene and that she should, should see if she can work at home full time if she doesn't like it. Today I went to work, and while Tina wasn't there, another woman who, was all, who also told me to mind my own business, we had some choice words. Now I'm wondering how I'm possibly the, how I'm possibly the bad guy here, because I like good mm. hygiene. Am, am I the asshole? Now again, I got this, of course, uh, from Am I the Asshole on Twitter, and when I went to go click on the link, Ooh. I'll read you the top. I, I like reading this particular one. Sorry, this post was deleted by the person who originally posted it. <laughs> you wonder what, what what could have happened. Why was that? So let's run down the line. Uh, let me find you that one thing. Uh, well, actually, I'll just start here at the top. You're the asshole. You sound like you don't know how hygiene, hair, or COVID work. Not to mention tact 
boundaries or the role of HR is another comment. The next comment after that, check her story. She has a previous post talking about a large gathering over Christmas. So this person not only uh, is on some bullshit, but also goes to parties themselves. But then this next one is where I, where I said, I said, this started taking a turn. If you check out her username oh. on here, there's a Twitter, there's a Twitter with the exact same username belonging to a woman who is apparently involved in local politics, tried to run for auditor, and seems to do other influential work in her community. Kind of concerning if this account is connected to OP. She's clearly bonkers because if you look at the comments on her Reddit profile, found her on Facebook. And she, this is another, this is another comment. Found her on Facebook and she legitimately the absolute worst. How is she going to bitch about someone not washing her hair enough when she had a fuck and when she has fucked off on multiple, multiple multi-state and international vacations in April, May, November, December, and January. Direct quote from one of her Facebook statuses from October. Media reports about overflowing hospitals, surging cases, People started staring in, standing in lines to be tested and rationing in care mean nothing when the cameras show zero cars parked in the lots, zero lines of people, no testing going on or people entering or leaving hospitals. Do they think we're stupid? But now, but now that she can be the asshole to one of her coworkers, suddenly she cares about COVID, LOL. Oh, so now we know why this woman deleted her post and how they went back and found that, found that lady. That is a uh, wild. Of course, I, I cannot tell you who she is because this person uh, deleted their post and, and uh, it appears the user itself is deleted because motherfuckers went and found her ass because they made the time. I like the Reddit sleuths or just like Twitter sleuths. <laughs> well, I mean, when you use the same name, I guess it's that easy, right? You know what I'm saying? From context like, clues, the mm-hmm. person who posted is white and the person who um, she complained about is black. I, I, and I'm going to tell you why. Um... Part of like going through um like the, the big chop and stuff like that is not washing your hair as often. Yeah, yeah your natural, natural hair, hair transition, transition because yeah. part of that helps the hair grow and become healthier and stronger. And she, the the black lady was probably talking to one of her friends about it, and she overheard like, "What? You not washing your hair?" I'll be honest. I assumed the same thing, but. I didn't have the wealth of knowledge on the uh, science behind <laughs> it like you did. Uh, but, uh, like, the thing is, it's, like, I know, like, a lot of black ladies, like, use head wraps and stuff like that at night and don't yeah, wash it all the time time because it, like, yeah. does damage and shit. So, yeah, so, like, I assumed based on that and, like, I, I, I know white women not all wash their hair every day. Some do it a couple times a week or once a week or whatever for, for similar reasons. But I just assumed by, like, the conversation and the sheer nosiness of this person that I assumed the original, yeah, I assumed that the original person talking was black and that the person doing the complaining was white. Well, I, uh, I definitely assumed this, it was a white woman complaining. I, ma- I made no uh, guesses about the, the woman who uh, washed her hair or on the schedule she washed. So, uh, but I, I just, uh, it was, it was wildly amusing. This woman delete this, this person deleted that post and apparently deleted her, uh, just deleted her Reddit in general. It even says user deleted. So they they were like, okay, I got the back of Homer Simpson to the bushes right quick away from this shit before I get towed on. It re- it reminds me of the um, the thing back in the summertime when there was the guy spray painting like Black Lives Matter on yeah. his own house like wall, and like the the couple walks up and it's like, so, I'm sorry, yes. uh, do you live here? I just like got up like, all this shit. This just here. like that. They were like, they were habitual um, line cross. Yeah, and the thing about that too is Twitter did what Twitter does, and they went and they found that lady's business and like where they live and all that shit. So then that lady was like, had to shut down her Instagram account because her Instagram account was like the business's Instagram account. Like I guess she sold like cosmetics and shit. So like you know they bombarded her with like negative reviews and and shit. The, the the liberal mob did what the liberal mob does, and they they pitch for the other way. <laughs> I just I, I I just I just I chuckle at the results of all of this, man. It's uh, Karen's gone, Karen. Uh, I sent y'all a video the other day about that that woman going off with the. She was going off on a cop who was uh es- trying to escort her out the restaurant, and like you, I have the right. <laughs> and I'm like y'all just don't know right. Y'all don't know what right you actually have. Trust me, you don't have the right to sit in a restaurant. Just nowhere in the constitution. I guess maybe pursuit of happiness, <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, I I saw one the other day of like people not wearing masks, trying to force He's their trying way to jump into a that And uh, the dude, like the manager, was being real reasonable, but then like the lady just yeah, being I insufferable. seen one. Um, I mean, I guess we could talk about this shit almost all night, but like um, this lady was coming to a restaurant not wearing a mask. And, like, at first, it was, like, the uh, a younger worker, like, um, please put on the mask. And, she, and like, the girl's like, no, I don't have to and all this stuff. She goes to get her manager. The manager is, like, telling her, you know, you, you can't do this. And, and, and come on, like, you know, we're trying to protect our workers. And the other lady is like, um, no, I'm going to come in anyway. And the girl's like, fuck that. I don't have to take this. I quit. You deal with the, uh, with these kind of shit. I don't. I don't want to anymore. And then the lady was like, "Fine, I'll put on a mask." I'm like, "What's the point now? <laughs> Just leave. Go get Taco Bell." Yeah, I, I'd have a hard time like being like an observer of all that and not just stepping in and cussing out the person because like I have no skin in the game. I don't work there. You can't fire me. So it's like I have no problem telling like the person in their face or being an insufferable like cuck or. Whatever, you know, whatever dirty term I feel like throwing out in the moment, you know? And like, her boyfriend is standing there with, with his mask on. I'm like, it must be really hard living with that woman, dude. <laughs> Just cover your damn nose, people. Your damn nose and mouth. It's not that deep. Uh, one of the, one of the, uh, uh, the executive orders uh, President Biden signed yesterday was uh, uh, just... Uh, it's 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 not a mandate in a way that you can force it, but it is basically asking people for the next hundred days to make sure you wear a mask. And uh, if you watch the inauguration, uh, every, everybody involved was masked up. Uh, I think except for when they were speaking, when they were at the po- at the podium speaking. So uh, yeah, I was pretty surprised to see Garth Brooks there. I mean, I don't I don't know nothing about his political background or nothing like that, but I was like. I, I feel like maybe that was telling what you, what you, what his political background was. You know what I'm saying? Cause, uh, I don't know. That motherfucker was running around with his mask off and he kept on running around, taking his hat on and off. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, so Chris Keegan and John Legend were, uh, there with their family and, uh, and she was, you know, she, she's a, she's, she's a little chatty Kathy. So she was explaining how, uh, they, uh, yeah. were tested every day for, uh, seven days straight. No, no, whatever. And every day they simply had to wait for their results and so forth. So just about anybody and everybody who was there has has, has started getting tested about a week out. And so we're going to assume Garth Brooks had been uh, tested and, tested. and and was okay to uh, to be there. And uh, masks and show love and dapped up to people who dapped up. So hmm. we'll, we'll assume. I know it's an assumption, but whatever. But uh, I don't know. It's just... Uh, I, didn't, I didn't watch a single second of any of the inauguration... And I'll be honest, I actually forgot it was happening until, uh, one, people told me that Trump, like, d- didn't show up and had, like, a uh, video package yeah. that they played. Then, two, my second context clues was practically every female I follow on any social media platform writing something to the effect of, I'm in my apartment right now, and I'm crying because this is just such a momentous day, and I can't believe what I'm seeing. Yeah. <laughs> she has a vagina. Well, like I said, I, was, I, was, I, was, uh, I watched it all day long, and, uh, and uh, right now I, I, I have uh, access to MSNBC because of Anthony. And uh, so MSNBC was on on my phone. Uh, Channel Three was on on the TV over here, and uh, and then I told you I cried my phone. I, I, every little step, of everything, something brought me brought me to to, to whatever. And it's uh, of, of everybody I know of, you would have been the one I would have oh, put surely. my money and, uh, on. Crying. And so it was uh, yeah. it was an experience. It was a uh, it, it's just it's 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 time for some things to go down, and uh, I'm I'm hopeful, man. Four hundred over four hundred thousand people have died. We are, as it turns out, utterly unprepared. Trump was just didn't do shit for COVID the entire time. He in his last few months after he lost, even though even though we got a vaccine going, he just was mad about losing and thus he did nothing. So we are utterly. It, it means Biden has to come in himself to set up a shop to make this shit work, and um, that's fucked up. Didn't have to be that way. Could have been a gracious loser, cause like you know, what I'm saying he's not the first guy who who didn't who only got one term in the office, but he didn't, and so we don't apparently have a 
uh, vaccine reserve. We don't have a plan to get uh, the, va- the vaccines out to people. Again, all of this is having to be done on the fly. And that's wild to me. So, again, uh, I would say wild. Oh, God. Yeah. Surprising. Yeah. We have. I mean, even, even our own local government said that they don't have any fucking plans on how they're going to distribute any of this shit. Like, and then to see what kind of a shit show we've been dealing with, like, I'm not surprised. Like, I'm I'm unmoved one way or the other. Like, I voted for Biden, but, like, I'm not here waving pom-poms and shit. Like, I'm just going to wait to see what happens. I can't imagine <laughs> it could get any worse. But see, that's the thing, though. Like... I, as a as a as a person who knows how things go, it's it's probably going to get worse because of how bad things were. And I'll be honest, yeah, like with with what Anthony's saying, I actually just expected an assassination attempt in the inauguration. If we're being honest, <laughs> like I'm not I'm not sitting here saying I was yeah, hoping for it. I'm not hoping saying. for that at all. I just figured, <laughs> like after the, the the shit that went down at the Capitol, like <laughs> earlier in the month, I figured that like. You know, they showed that they're willing to do some crazy yeah. shit. I just figured it was a matter of time before someone tried to pull some shit uh, during this. But, like, I guess they had it under control well enough to where nothing happened. Or if anything tried to happen, they stopped it. We just don't know they about it. Saying, but that, that's, I think that's going to be the story of this fucking presidency, though. Is, one, can this motherfucker live to even see the end of his term? Because he's old as shit already. And then, two, is he going to manage to make the four years before one of these crazy-ass people pops his ass? Well, they were saying like how like um, all those rallies that are supposed to happen across the country in every state, like they were saying like people, it was single digit numbers in every state. Yeah, I saw a couple of pictures, like one person outside of a building yeah, with a flag so, and shit. I mean, I can- <laughs> well, so they lost parlor. They don't have their ability to, to fucking coordinate now. That yeah, and man. they just been getting arrested by the fucking boatload. FBI just showing up, just snatching folk up, and it's just like you, you, yo, dumbass went out there, mask off because you don't, you don't believe in masks. Just the worst criminals ever to be in existence. Just like, just dumb as fucking bricks. But, but that, but that goes to show you too that like they didn't even think what Correct. they were doing was criminal. They were, they were so convinced that everything that they believed was right that they went and committed all those crimes. I didn't even think that they were crimes. Yeah, yeah. So. All of them about to catch wild cases. I'm I, I'm honestly shocked. Yeah. When we talked about this, I was I thought for sure that nothing would happen to any of those people. Maybe one, just yeah. as an example. But like then, like they were like you know state by state rounding people up. I was like, okay, I, I, something's going on yeah, here. It's one of those things where they were just like, oh, you violated in a way that uh, means you have to do some fair time. And like I said, these are all these. That's that's another thing I don't think these people understand. These is federal charges. You'll go to pound me in the ass prison. You gonna go to some real ass jail if you if, if you are if no, you are conf- federal prison. Actually, federal prison is the uh, is the opposite. If they go to federal prison, is to a good like, prison. If they go to Terra uh, Terra Holt, Indiana, where where we that's where the federal prisoners are put to death. Oh, they go into real jail. We do have some nice fed jails. You know what I'm saying yes, we do. But also, we got some fucked up max security spots that a lot of these people might end up in because a lot of them came with weapons. So they get automatically tacked on weapons charges. And they get tacked on everything else and so forth. And like I said, these people were, were were apparently just ready to kidnap and kill. Just just be and, and a good multi, a good I believe as I've read, one in five of the people who have been arrested thus far have all been either current or former military. So they also get <laughs> that little book thrown at them too, because those that military honor code shit don't play. I hope it was worth it to you to. Absolutely not do anything. <laughs> you 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 broke into the uh, broke into the Capitol. You still didn't stop the, the election results from being certified. Your boy still had to go fly his ass to Florida like a bitch that he is. And uh, you injured you injured some cops that you the, said that you, lives matter, you know, believed but it turns in. Turns out they don't. And then you and then you and then yeah. you got a lady popped. So there you go Hopefully. in her neck. Well, she got she got herself popped. You know Indeed. by being there, but you know I'm bleeding. So. <laughs> sure, sure. Hope was worth it. Sure, sure, sure. Hope was worth it, and, I, and like I said, I, I simply hope for the best. It's all I can do. I can, I can hope for the best, and I can hope for change. And uh, they, they, that's just where I'm at in all of this, man. So, that's it, people. You, 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 you've been given another show. But uh, as always, let's uh, let's do a little. 
I actually I actually saw a tweet about that lady earlier today. That was like she got to see the Capitol and Ronald Reagan all in one day. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so she went to hell is what you're saying. Very good. Okay, well, okay, I understand. Good on is you. Is she good. the only person to ever um, get to see Grover Cleveland three times? Oh! <laughs> uh, as always, please rate, review, subscribe, and share the show wherever possible. Please subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels. Uh, it really just helps if you go over there and, and you show the numbers of love. Got a guy who's been just uh, right, right to the show feed talk, talking about how much he enjoys uh, a podcast, The Vinyl Edition, which is our YouTube uh, uh, uh Record unboxing show, and I'm I'm kind of like, okay, good on you, sir. I, I have some uh, episodes I need to get put up, so uh, I, uh, he will be even the more entertained. So that, that that's kind of nice that uh, people are responding and, and and showing us love, and I hope uh, you are enjoying our work in in all these aspects of the world too. Again, we got some stuff we're trying to work on uh, here in uh, 2021. We'll see where it all heads. Yeah, yeah. Anthony and I were gonna do a. Uh, uh different show and we made plans and then we forgot <laughs> hey you just well, you set it to a calendar and uh and uh you let me know and i'll set i'll set the zoom up for you and everything we all to the good man so yeah we well, yeah i didn't i didn't think i didn't think we forgot we just didn't really uh settle on the date but we do have i, I thought, thought in retrospect i thought we agreed on that coming tuesday but then i just kind of forgot well, again, <laughs> stuff coming down the pike for- I, I i realized it after the fact i figured you and i would talk oh. about it I just figured, like, uh, you said you had some stuff coming down. To, um, I was like, okay, well, I'll, I'll wait till you're ready. We already got the idea. I think it's a really, really good idea. Are you interested in, uh, in, in Anthony and, and Dan's uh, new show? Well, you want to get down with our you want to get down with our Patreon, <laughs> where we're members at the five dollar and above tier get new shows like what Anthony and uh, and Dan are working on over here. So uh, you trying to get down to get down? Go holler at our Patreon and. Uh, and see if you you want you wants to futz with us. Uh, we also have merch over there, over at tpublic.com. slash user slash stage crunching milk. All one word. You can get t shirts. You can get mugs. You strangely, get no tea. Face masks. You can get uh, stickers, magnets, uh, large array of clocks, notebooks. We were really just a little bit of everything over there. So uh, please have it. Enjoy. <laughs> Feel free to give us a call 216-302-8763. That's 216-302-8pod. We would certainly love to hear from you. Voicemails are always a trip. So if you want to send one in, go for it. It's good times. Uh, that's Tatum 216. That's uh, Lunchbox 2099. Uh, what would you do if your son was at home crying all alone on the bedroom floor because he's hungry and the only way to feed him is to sleep with a man for a little bit of money? Have you seen, um, like, it's a... I think it's a little short video about it. Like they they jam into the song at first. It's like, have you heard these words? <laughs> yeah. Hold Wait. up. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> That's the real ODP. He is nodding. People. I am the Tayro Seven Thirteen. You have just been podcast two, and I know you loved it. Peace. Hey, what happened to you? You need to be beautiful.